Hello, everyone, and welcome to the St. John's GET podcast. This is our first episode, and my name is Paul, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, John and Caitlin. How you guys doing? <clears throat> my name is John. I'm a recent graduate of St. John's University with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing. Great to be on the show today. Can't wait to talk about some interesting topics. I'm Caitlin. I'm a voice actor, and I'm an artist. I'm a sophomore, and I'm a TV, TV and film major. And me, Paul, I'm a computer science major, and with it, I'm going to try to do video game development in my career. So our first topic for today, we're going to be talking about just Nintendo's struggles with what they've been doing lately. And just like, for example, like their bad directs and stuff. So we'll start with that. And I'll be playing Luigi's Mansion in the background, just as some gameplay. So, so a lot of the directs lately have just been feeling very lackluster. Like, the the last big one, where they announced Pyra and Mithra, it just felt flat, like, halfway through. Yeah. I don't understand why they had the creator... Of, was it the creator or the director of Zelda? I, I forgot it was, it was the who it was. I think, I think he's still... The creator still... They had the they had him come on, and it made it seem like they were going to give us news, and then they straight up said that there's going to be no Breath of the Wild news. I don't really understand why they did that, but then they went right into Skyward Sword... They should have just went right into Skyward Sword instead of, like, setting us up to think we're actually getting Breath of the Wild news. Yeah, I didn't understand that either. And also, what the Skyward Sword remake kind of looks like crap. It really it's does. not a remake or a remaster. It's just the same game. There's really nothing that's changed about it except for the controls. Is it really the same game? It is the same game, yeah. They just did a quality of life update with the, like the graphics or there's like a it's like a filth it looks like a, I a filter guess it's it. the quality of life update like a slight filter but you see the polygons so basically what you're saying is it's going to be priced probably at like $60 yeah it's yeah like $60. Sixty dollars. it's and $60 it's pretty much the exact same game but they're just gonna like update everything in terms of quality with the weren't we games like $40 back then I think they were still 60 I think they were they 60 were back then? Back nothing then. has been 40 since the PS2 age. Yeah, nothing No, has been $40. DS games were $40, so well, were 3DS games. Uh, that's probably because it was a DS. That was a like handheld console. Those were yeah. never. Back then, they were never $60 until late 3DS. I don't remember Wii games being so expensive because we had a lot when we were younger. I think how it is, like, during that timeline, most, like, most companies that were selling video games were pricing their games at $60 if it was on a major console. In regards of a handheld console, though, it was $40, really, for a game at that price and at that time. Let's see, how much were Wii games at launch? Uh, they were $49.99. Xbox games, Xbox 360 games were sixty dollars, so they were about fifty. So everything at the time to be like getting to a point where they were gonna push the sixty dollars. Yeah, it is what it is. They pushed yeah. it to sixty once the Wii U came out. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know honestly about that one console though. That's the one console I don't have from Nintendo. What else? What else? The Wii U. Um, yeah. The, well, another direct that was really like bad. The um. The fact that they kept throwing, like, mini directs out, and they would just yeah, shadow was... drop it. It was really confusing for me as to why they would shadow drop that. Yeah, I don't know why. It was- they... sometimes it was just games that were already announced in, like, previous directs, too. So it was just a compilation of the same trailers. True. True. What? Okay, I'm trying to remember exactly though. The last direct was the one with you said Pyra and Mithra, right? That was like, yeah. That, that it was started with Pyra and Mithra. That's what yeah. they started off with, right? So they start off with something for a game that a lot of members of the Nintendo like fan base have, which is for um, Smash Ultimate, right? Yeah. yeah. And after that, they pretty much released like, or they were showing like they were showing off a lot of I think indie company games, right? Um, that was kind of other than like out. Square Enix, I don't think so. Uh, the only game I kind of saw in that regard that looked interesting to me was, I think it was the Triangle Defense one. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the, the Square Triangle game. Strategy or something yeah, like that? Joey yeah, liked yeah. that. It looks very interesting, that game. That game. It was like Fire Emblem in Disgaea style. Yeah. In a 2D-looking style, it 
reminded me of another game that I don't remember if it was released on Steam first or if it might have been released on Nintendo first, and it was called the Octopath Traveler. Where they oh, kind Octopath of Traveler, oh, yeah. that was on the Switch. It was on the Switch first? That yeah, that Switch, was on the yeah. Switch. Okay, so that is like, I think it might be like similar to that, or it kind of has like that same vibe that they kind of go for. And the styling. I'm not sure it's supposed to be a prequel or a sequel, but it looks very similar to Octopath. It does look very similar, but, but was, I like that style. But with Square, with Square there's Enix, nothing wrong with that. Like, Square they, Enix always hits it out of the ballpark. They've been really doing well lately. Yeah, it's but cool though. Did, did Square Enix? Well, they were involved in Octopath, right? I don't think they I. Were. I think, think they, they published were. it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Square Enix publishes a lot of games because they published Life is Strange. Okay. Uh, well, now I'm trying to remember. The, the other thing with that, that Pyro and Mytha Direct, they started off with something strong and then everything after that was just like lackluster. Very, like, yeah, very subpar. So Definitely it, that was the case. Just Nintendo has the habit of just starting things off strong, but then later on it just gets weaker and weaker. Because like, I think during COVID at this point, these companies are not relying on directs or anything. Related to Nintendo directs, they're not relying on it, and they just shadow drop it on Twitter or something. That's a trend I've been seeing. Like, for um, for NIS America games, I've been seeing a lot of shadow drops on Twitter, and I was like, where did Disgaea 6 come from? I have no idea where this was announced. And it was announced for a New Games Expo or something like that. So they're sourcing out to other direct styled presentations and not really focusing on the Nintendo Direct anymore. It's it's very strange to me, but I don't I don't know. Is it just because they just have a lot of like content to like end up like showcasing and they don't have enough time to put it into one direct maybe? And that's just why they're doing these mini directs. That well that triangle really strategy game had a lot of time. That's true. I feel like, but I, hmm, here I'm gonna well, well I'm gonna look actually up and see who actually it, it was. Was it Square Enix that was releasing that game? I what think was it was game? Square yeah, it Enix. Was, Square I Enix I, I, I feel like Square Enix was showcasing it a lot of it though, just because it's like it looked like a very like complicated game. And they well, had especially kind of since the demo stuff. was out that day. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. The about demo that. was out. The demo it's came out that day. That's right. You're completely right about that. I actually forgot the demo was released. I just thought it was honestly the only thing that they released was just a trailer for it. But I remember they showcased a lot of three houses, and I don't remember a demo coming out. Yeah, no, they didn't. There no so there's game. like target games that they show a lot of. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And then at the very end, like you say, so it starts strong, right? Mediocre middle, and at the end. Do you think it was strong, right? It ends well, on Splatoon 3. I'm, in my opinion, no. P some people liked it, but... Well, I didn't people just... like Splatoon 3. I, I think it was very expected after the SOS post that was made in 2020. Was it 2020? Or was it 2019? They it was, made, like, the SOS post. It was something in the, um... What's the other game mode? I for this is a salmon game mode. That thing. Salmon. Oh man, salmon run or something like that. Oh, I, I, the I think? the Splatoon fans are gonna come out for me. Um, <laughs> I haven't played Splatoon in a while. It's like salmon run or something like that. I tried it like t a few times, I, but I think it is something like that. I, I know. But they it was... hint so you're saying they hinted at it though. They they, like, they did they hint at it with the distress. Okay. Signal yeah, and... it was um, I think it said 2020, and then the reflection said SOS on the water. I, thought it I remember the SOS part on the water, but I don't remember like any. I think it was fireworks or something. Okay. And then it but said SOS on the water. I thought it was like Honestly, happy 2020 or something. I, when I it saw might it, have though, been early 2020. Seeing it though was very interesting to me because I honestly thought that because they would just stop at two. I like and then they had the DLCs right. I thought it was gonna be another DLC because it was in like some kind of like sandy area right, kind of looking like a desert. There's a new environment that they were going to showcase and drop as, you know, part of a DLC. But then it ended up not being the case. It was much longer, and it really kind of, like, showcased that. But I feel like it is a big reveal. But, like, do people, like, there is a fan base out there for Splatoon 3, I'm guessing. Well, they, they left the rest to Twitter. Again, they're not... They're not broadcasting... The they're not broadcasting the full thing. 
Because I saw something on Twitter, I think it was from Nintendo, that that desert part is going to be a huge part of Splatoon 3. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. that was the thing, because I was wanting to direct, like, oh, it's going to be a new area. Then they just went back to the city. I was like, oh. They went to Inkopolis, yeah. Like, oh, it's the city again. Yay. So, overall, like... They need to start there's... showing this stuff. They can't just leave it to social media, because not everyone has... Okay, yeah, that's, like, something weird to say not everyone has social media. But, you know, if you're watching a Nintendo Direct, and it's part of the game, you expect to see it broadcasted. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's true. And then at the end of the day, they end up sprinkling things here and there. Like, the, the, the most recent, like, Direct was, like, that mini-drop Direct of uh, the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Rise. And, which, yeah. That was Lackluster 2, wasn't it? Um... In the case it was, because one of the, well, in reality, the next main series game was Rise. But they were also showcasing another game series that was on the 3D, or um, it was either on the Switch or the 3DS at one point. And it was, it's not even like closely it related the, to. It was the kids um, game or something? It's, yeah, it's like a JRPG game where basically you're gonna, and like you're, you're like a kid that's like ride, it's basically you're mo like a monster hunter rider, I think it's called where you basically tame these monsters and you're able to ride on them and the idea that is interesting cool. it's very interesting but i'm not entirely sure if there is a large fan base behind it i'm guessing there was because there is now going to be another game released with it the only thing that like i see maybe causing issues is the fact that they wanted to promote that game and rise at the same time and to do that in order with the showcase, I think they were doing a pre-order bonus for Rise. Or if you bought the like this other game, you were gonna get something for Rise. And honestly, the pre-order or like the uh, the extra stuff that you get from it looks really interesting, and I kind of liked it a lot. But like, I don't really want to have to like get a game that I'm not looking into more than Rise, in my opinion. I saw Amiibos were announced for Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, true? I think amiibos were announced during the direct because I have um, I have amiibo news on for Twitter to make sure I like keep track of ami amiibos I want, mm -hmm. and I think they announced them. Uh, you know what? Here's a good question, honestly, that I would love to see you guys have input on, because I don't really know about amiibos that much, but I know like. There is like a fan base behind these amiibos, but is it ultimately the right path for the company? I mean, I, I think they're cool little collectible figures. I would say yes and no because they don't send out many. They they stop. They don't they create st enough stock. They yeah, that's like another problem that Nintendo. They has. also don't stop scalpers from buying like two or more. That's interesting. Because I, 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 some companies do. I know Best Buy stops it. I'm not sure about any other companies. Okay. But I know that some websites just let them have a free for all and buy like ten of them at once to sell on eBay, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, you mean like so, you mean like Sony with their PlayStation fives? Oh, um, so, and the would, Xbox. That's a so whole other discussion for another day. <laughs> would you say that this is a issue on like supply and demand, and that they're lacking in supply because of this? That's that's one of Nintendo's problems all the time. They just they like oh we'll keep the demand high by having no supply whatsoever. But it's like they they just never ever give the supply at any point. That is true. I mean, like when... with their older games, they you can't find anything because they barely produced them for the West. Yeah, I mean, I experienced a really bad supply and demand when it came to buying. I think like last year with like the beginning beginning of the uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. And how the Nintendo Switch was such a highly asked, like a like a high commodity that it was being like purchased multiple times by other people, and then everyone was trying to sell it all, like to sell it off to make a profit. When there's people out there who just want to afford a console at a reasonable price, and yeah, I mean, to go around. my sister broke her Switch. Her Switch broke. The LCD and the battery just went out, and I had to, you know, run around, look at other stores, hopefully I find one, and then they restocked it at Target. They had three in stock. By the time I went there, there was only one left in stock, and that was within 30 minutes. 30 minutes! It's ridiculous. I was lucky to get that Switch for her. Crazy. 
I mean, but even I, then, that is, that's like for me, it was insane though because I didn't want to buy it at five, like five hundred dollars in my case, right? I felt like no. that was like too high of a price. It's way too high of a price for a console, and in my case, it was actually like getting close to like my birthday though, so it was an early birthday present for me by my mom, and she said, "Here you go," and I was like. I'm like, I wanted it, but I didn't want the, at like this, but I got to experience that well, with that, um, the new Animal Crossing, and I enjoyed it while I had uh, spent a lot of time on it, and then they've been updating that every couple months, I think, or whatever the case might be. Well, that game was one of the reasons why the Switches went out of stock, because you had everyone buying it, and then they were just completely gone. True. Oh, good, good I, it, accident, John. <laughs> Sorry guys, the, he picks it up. I'm trying not to breathe into it. I'm gonna. John it. ASMR. Just, this is now an just, ASMR session. Just hold your breath. Just, you can last for about an hour or two. Uh, no yeah, breathing. I can last. Yeah, don't worry, I got strong lungs. <laughs> Anyways, though, back on topic. So yeah, I mean exactly. A lot of Animal Crossing got involved with like the pandemic. Like I felt like the pandemic really brought the Switch into more of the public's hands. But not enough supply, right? That's basically it. High it just demand, went back to when it was supply. released. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't that, when it released. It was so hard to find one. Like they were gone. Yeah, no, I had to fight to even find one for my grandma to buy me for Christmas. It's, That's it's, how bad it was. It's pretty intense, I must say. But I mean, that can't be the only major like supply demand issue that Nintendo has, though, right? Besides this, like and console related. I mean, the Amiibos, too, and uh, I'm trying to think what else is there. Uh, like, their older games, that, too. Oh, there was another one I was thinking What do you mean by their, uh, their older games? What, what the games? fact that they don't have an online database for us to access to uh, play virtual console games? Oh, yeah, there's no, that? Actually, there's no way to play any of their older games. You're kind of just... The Gen 4 Pokemon games are going for about 80 to $100 just for a cartridge, and you're lucky if that's even a real copy and not that's some that's knockoff scary. from China. You said, wait, you're saying that, like, the original Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum are getting priced at $80. Yeah. That's, see, th that hurts me, though, because I grew up on that, and a lot of people my age probably did, too, and maybe even, like, some uh, years, a couple years younger here and there. That really hurts to hear. If you go to GameStop, you can't get them for under $60, and that's lucky if it's 60 That's true. I mean, but, you know what, is it like that time, though? Like, this is why, like, Nintendo, um, I think they were talking about the Pokemon remake, right? For, uh, Gen 4? The Diamond and Pearl oh, remake? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luckily, so we're getting that. Like, so that's giving us more access to playing that game. That's true. That's very, yeah, I want people to experience a game like that, because I felt like that was a very fun Pokemon game. I mean, granted, that was, like, the one I actually attempted to really beat, because I had Emerald on the GPA, but I wasn't that great at it i like too young for me like at that point and emerald being the harder of ruby and sapphire and the only thing i'm just curious now though with this is that um because they're remaking this game like is it gonna be good like i'm i'm curious like will the remake actually live up to the expectations of like the original game i think it looks faithful and I hope it does, because honestly, I mean, what other Pokemon games have there been since, right? There haven't been that There's many Pokemon There's only been Sword and prior. Shield. Sword, and, Sword Shield. and Shield was the last mainline game. And then they had their DLCs, correct? That was almost have, two years ago now. One yeah, DLC? the DLC came out last year. Or was there two DLCs? It was... Uh, oh, man, what, what was it called? Like, the Armor Isles or something was, like that? Yeah, yeah, Armor Isles is one of them. Yeah. No, they, they only had, um... What was it? I think it was split into two parts. Maybe. So you pay you pay once, you pay thirty dollars, and then it's released in two parts. Oh yeah, now I remember. Yeah, the first one yeah. was the Armor Isles, and then you get the new girl, Cl Clara. No. Clara is in Sword, and Avery is in Shield. I have Avery. You have Clara. Wait, how okay. many DLCs do they have? Two or like three? It, it was one DLC, but it was split in two parts. I'm looking. So I'm just looking into this. Really one quick. part was released the first half. One part was released the second half of uh, 2020. I see. So they had yeah. the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Oh yeah, that's what it was called. Never. I heard. I remember seeing the Isle of Tundra. Or no, I'm sorry, the Isle of Armor. 
I did not hear about this Crown of Tundra though, at all. I don't even know how. Oh, I it's the heard ice one. This. Okay, now I know what you're talking about it's the ice one. Yeah, I did not see this one. But the... wait, let's see this. They added a co-op play feature. I feel like I should have heard about this. They added co-op. Wait, what? what? They added a co-op play feature to the part two of this DLC that you were getting, like when you had like these the duo pack. But well, that's I like sixty dollars. You'd have to pay thirty and thirty. Wait, wait you have, is you it have to buy the duo it's... pack? Wait. No, 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 I have to buy the DLC for shield, you have to buy the DLC for sword. Oh, I thought you were saying- So we would buy. both have to own the DLC in order to do that. Wait, I'm sorry, so they're, what they're doing in this regard is that they're splitting DLC as well? Is that the case? Or you're allowed it's not, to- It's both? not a universal DLC for both games, they're why? separate DLCs. Wait, why would they do this? I'm sorry. Does and that, they weren't named correctly on the eShop at one point, and people were trying <laughs> to get refunds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were trying to get refunds because they weren't named right. They didn't know whether it was for Sword or Shield, so they were buying the wrong DLC, and Nintendo oh. had so many calls trying to get refunds. Even parents were trying to get refunds because they didn't know which one they bought for their kid. I feel, see, this is definitely a blunder for Nintendo. I feel like a game that you're, if you're going to release a DLC for a game, you should at least, and especially in the case of how Pokemon works, where they like to make two separate games, so like you can only get certain pack, you can only get these certain Pokemon in one, um, like, uh, half of the game as opposed to the other, and like generally you can get like most of them, but like the specifically certain types of Pokemon that you're trying to catch, you can't get them if, unless you have Sword or unless you have Shield. Now they're going to expand it onto a DLC. Now that's not fair at all. I feel like from a marketing standpoint, in terms of like being faithful to the public. That you should be able to at least define like it should never be a case of, of a perfect split like that they should not be allowing a dlc like only you can get dlc with sword if you have sword or shield if you have shields game like if they have done it like that like oh you can get shield but like it only lets you see it within the game like that would make more sense if they just put it out there on the shop and no one knows because there's not enough information available to understand the purchasing point and the correct purchase, then this is where it, f it all falls. And that's why something like that happens. I mean, they had separate directs for Pokemon. Pokemon is its own separate thing now. Oh, oh yeah. they are doing that? Yeah, it's called Pokemon Presents. And they and they showcased this. In the yeah. Pokemon. Wasn't and that they, they showed off the Did they? Master? Now, here's my question. Though. Yes, yes. And they showed Pokemon Legends as well. That's Which another one? thing to talk about because Which that's... One is that? Pokemon Legends is the prequel to Diamond and Pearl. Oh, is that what that new thing is? With Interesting. Yeah, Legends it's the Arceus one. Yeah. Po uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Do you see, I, I missed out on like, this extra... It was When was this direct? Was this after... Uh, this was, it was, was the day before Pokemon Day, I think. Unless it was February 27th. Oh, this was last... Ago, right? It was some. It was somewhere around you would the say last, last week of February. Or so? so, yeah, so the I last week not... of February. I did not hear- yeah, see, I was more paying attention to what Monster Hunter Rise, I wasn't paying attention to the Pokemon one. More or less, I just didn't feel engaged enough to want to get, uh, acquire a Sword or Shield copy. But honestly, like, I was considering getting it now, but with everything going- like, especially after hearing about this expansion pass, like, deal in the DLC. And well, you pay like $15 a year to transfer Pokemon into your game and then there's like some other separate membership for the 3ds if you want to transfer pokemon so there, from the other games so, yeah so basically it's 20 dollars a year to transfer your pokemon wait what? so they're so yeah she's not wrong she, it is five dollars for the it's five dollars for pokemon bank on the 3ds and 15 dollars for pokemon home on the switch i i gotta Why say though because they were separate softwares pokemon um bank existed before can I say one thing at least? At least like the because I, I I had a switch and like I only played like online like every now and then if I someone asked me to like play with them and it's usually like for Animal Crossing and we're just visiting islands and we're just doing little things here and there. Now like when I would buy a month's worth, it's only five dollars in that case, which I feel like for online play compared to let's say like Xbox Live or um so I think I forget what the PlayStation Online is called. Oh PS, PS Plus. PS Plus. Plus. Yeah. yeah. So I think those are was it fifteen dollars a month I believe with those companies right? And gold then, is ten dollars a month I think. Yeah, they gold, changed gold, the gold. It was ten dollars a month. Gold it keeps going up in price. It, it fluctuated all over the place because people were like really angry about that. I remember. So I remember gold being fifteen dollars a month 
Really? Like years okay, ago. Though. Ori originally, it used to be, I believe, it was sixty dollars a year. Then it went, unless it was unless it was cheaper than that. I don't even remember. Jeez. I I mean, this is me going off of knowledge from when I was like playing on an Xbox 360, and that was like the like. Oh, like everyone, like that was like the beginning of like online play with a lot of my friend groups. Because PlayStation had like online play for like PS2, but no one really was using that at the time. And wait, PS2 it, had online play? It did have an it, online it was, play. It was um. That it, is news to me because I would only play Guitar Hero, and that Ice Age came on there. <laughs> Wait, you, it, it was like uh, it was an adapter in the back. It was only um, yeah. Ethernet. It was it, there oh, was a really? wireless version, but it was ex I think it was expensive and hard. I had the Disney sing it too. I still have the microphones the for only it. The reason why I know that though is because the original Monster Hunter was on the PlayStation Two, and when I was always walking around, because they have sections where it's like, okay, these are your quests for doing single player, but then they have like this thing called the Gathering Hub. And when you would go to the Gathering Hub, that's where you would gather up a group to go do the harder um, missions in the game and the harder hunts. Now, that's why I just knew about there being PlayStation 2's like online play. But you know what it is, though, too, with that? You have to look into the cartridge. The actual like box of the cartridge would say it has online play on it. Which, But it's either, I think the text is like extremely like small and it's usually like in a corner or it's like a little icon it's like the little spy label. it looks a little i remember it being like a little spy dude thing yeah that's exactly. what i always remember it being oh i know what icon you're talking about now so the, but they had that and that was the indicator if the game had an online play and playstation 2 games had i if depending on which ones you might have acquired they had a lot of games that had online play but most of the time, like, a PlayStation 2 game was single player. And now we live in an age of, you know... Um, just multiplayer. Multiplayer of mass, is what's, what's uh, important. Yeah, ma it's just inclusive, you know, inclu mass inclusion. And including everyone and getting, like, communities together to do th and enjoy a fun and an interactive game with extremely high amounts of content. That's what the idea is. Now, Nintendo releases games that have extremely high amounts of content. And much other like smaller games that do have these um, content uh, pools to like access, but even then, like I'm trying to think of a con like a game I felt like was very interesting to hear about, like this. Uh, oh my god, I'm trying to remember the Mario Collection or, or whatever it was called. Oh, that, that. Oh yeah, the All Star Collection. Yeah, that's another thing. That's a weird. There is sixty dollars for three emulators, not even real games. Emulators. Those games are. It's emulated. it's been proven that they were emulated. Now, how, wait, where exactly had these been? Like, now is it said by the company that they were uh, mentioning that these were emulators? Though? No, or, like, like, people, the, people the, data mined it. Yeah, uh, and that's an, okay. Now that's definitely. I feel like. How much was it? Sixty dollars worth, right? Sixty. It was also yeah. $60. It was it was a quote unquote port. So sixty dollars for a game, like for three games essentially. Now that could be seen as good value, but and especially because you're gonna get the almost the exact same games through an emulation, right? On what was it? A Switch? It's a Switch. Or, yeah, it's all on the, the Switch, Switch yeah. right? Okay. So now that could be seen as good value, and honestly, in my perspective, I see that as three games for the price of one and they were exceedingly good games 64 you know super mario 64 i've never played but i've heard great things it's like one of the top games of all time we have super mario sunshine another game that i grew i grew up playing as a kid when i got my first ever console it was a gamecube and i played that game and i experienced the wonders of everything nintendo had to offer at the time when i think that they definitely had a glory age back then and even Super Mario, um, Super Mario Galaxy, right? That was the other game, I believe. Gal right? it was Gal yeah, it Galaxy, is. Galaxy Sunshine and uh, 64. 64. And 64, right? Okay. So Galaxy was like one of the first Wii games I got for Nintendo. That was really mind blowing to me, especially because of how it was a whole new idea of a platformer, being entirely around like a center po like a center gravity point which really was introducing new concepts of like a game that goes from like 2D of 3 like 2D to 3D and now it's like the 3D is being pushed to its limits. Definitely for me I felt like those games being accessible to a new audience 
a younger audience even is very good to see for a company but if there's issues with these uh the like because you're saying it's what was it a limited edition correct right yeah it's leaving the eShop on the 31st which it, is another problem of digital preservation and that's my problem i feel like they shouldn't do that yeah i, I don't like know why it's not. like limited with already with the um the scalpers the physical too. copies are already out like gone scalpers have already gotten to them so now if they do that. restock the scalping material they're gonna be gone no one's gonna be able to get it like if a 10 year old kid wants to play super mario galaxy he's gonna have to go to gamestop and pay 60 dollars for a used copy and it doesn't even come with a box or anything just the disc or he's gonna have to pay like a hundred dollars on ebay or even worse like 200 300 just to get a copy on the switch because it's off the eShop. i definitely yeah, feel like it's Nintendo really needs to do Spe oh, about speaking that. of 200 hundred dollar games i remember mm -hmm. another one of the games that i had to get that i was dying to play path of radiance but i i was, like searched for months on the gamestop just waiting for it to come in and i got really lucky at one point it was just on there for 60 bucks complete in box but now i look on anywhere it's 200 dollars the game are you serious? The game is two hundred dollars now. When was this complete game inbox? This game was made a complete inbox. Sixty dollars, I found it, and it's like the game's. Here, I'm looking from two thousand eight. Question mark? So I'm just looking. Hold on. The initial. It was a Wii game, right? You no, know, it was GameCube. This is a. Oh, Game GameCube. This is a Radiant GameCube Dawn. Game. Radiant Dawn is the uh, what's it called? This is an. I've never Wii even game? seen this one yeah, before. Wii I've oh, never okay. Seen Fire Emblem before. This is a 2005. I'm surprised I didn't hear about this. Like, you know what? Growing up, I'm surprised I didn't. I didn't really know about Fire Emblem. I kind of learned more about Fire Emblem as I got older, more or less because it's like a teen game. And as a kid, my parents definitely like were abiding by the ESR, you know, an ESRB rating. Which honestly, I feel like that's a an entirely another issue. Yeah, that, that, that's that's weird. But it is what it is. Now, moving on from something like that. I'm trying to think of another way I can dissect into Nintendo. Their virtual console? I think, personally, because I have played on the Wii U virtual console before, I think the Wii U and the Wii are the best examples of virtual console. The Wii had such a great selection for virtual console that unfortunately had to shut down because of Nintendo ending their contract with the internet provider, like the server provider. Okay. That's but I played on the Wii U, I played Mega Man Battle Network one through six, mm -hmm. and it just completely blew me away that I'm able to play that game on a nice flat screen TV, a game from like 2001 to 2006. Crisp, high definition, beautiful, sounds amazing, looks amazing. And I have access to play those games because now the Mega Man Battle Network games are going up in price as we speak. I was lucky to get some complete in boxes, but Battle Network 1 and 2 are the two games that are up in price, up in like $200, $300. So that's what I'm talking about. Those Game Boy games, DS games, we need access to those. They have the resources. They just refuse to release it to us. That is it. That is truly an issue that needs to be addressed with Nintendo, I feel like, though, too. Now, this is only with, you said, the Wii's version, right? The, the, the Wii version had, or the Wii virtual consoles were exceedingly the best ones, in your opinion, correct? Yeah, anyway. they had Kirby Superstar, too, on there. I have Kirby Superstar on my um, Wii, and that came from Club Nintendo, and Club Nintendo was one of the best sources of receiving virtual console. I received that for free through Club Nintendo. Okay. It was like one of those um, redeem your points and you get a code. So I got oh, okay. Kirby Superstar for free. That's really, that's nice. That's actually really interesting. That's pretty good. Now compare, let's say, like, I'm, we're going to compare that one to the current one we have now, right? Where Nintendo has, right, does Nintendo have um, on the Switch the virtual console? They only have it's the Nintendo NES, Online. The, the, okay. Yeah, the Nintendo Online, like the NES. It's and NES and SNES. SNES. Yeah. But, like, that's all they have. They have nothing, they haven't had anything since. That's interesting that they don't. Now, How long has it been since they started the Nintendo Online? Probably whenever mm. the Switch was released. Or whenever Smash got released. No, I think it was 2019. Wouldn't it have been released with, Oh, the Nintendo Online itself, not like the Switch's Yeah, like, not the Switch. With, okay. No, not the Switch itself, because the Switch started... Was it like with Mario Kart and stuff like that? Like, No, yeah, the yeah. Switch started with Breath of the Wild. 
Well, Breath no, of the, the Wild was the launch game. The Switch released with Breath of the Wild, but I'm also yeah. sure that now, like, like when, like when I had gotten mine, it was being released with a Mario Kart copy that was coming with your game. That was or with your console. 2018. Oh, that was a bundle. Right? So the bundle. I mean, in my case, I got that bundle. That game, yeah, that game released a while ago. Okay. They just now continue to set up like special bundles for parents who want to buy it for their kids, and they're like, "Oh, Mario Kart, okay, so we can get Mario Kart and the Switch together for this price." Now, do you think that a bundle would be considered more overpriced or getting more value? For your it's box? the same price. You're paying sixty for the game and three hundred for the console. It just depends on how much tax is in your state. Okay. Yeah, that some of them, some of the bundles were four hundred though. That's where it's like, ooh. That's because it included like an SD card, a case, stuff like that. Like oh, every, wait, the did. essentials. Yes, they did. So it would come with a game, a little kit for the kid to use or mm -hmm. whoever is using it, and then the switch. And at normal price, what would you say this all would have been? It was for a bundle and stuff. It was around. You're saying three hundred. You're saying around four hundred in total, because sixty for the game, three hundred for the console, and then forty for like the screen protector, the controller protectors, stuff okay. like that. And then in my time when I was getting and receiving this console, I had to deal with an inflated price of a hundred dollars added on top of that. So clearly, Nintendo has this issue with the supply demand. And with these consoles, these virtual consoles. Honestly, you know what? The other thing I felt like is a, a, an issue for me is the actual controllers itself that come with your Oh, Switch. I don't like them. They're so bad. Even while I'm playing Luigi's Mansion right now, I feel the Joy-Con drift. I don't know if it's showing on stream. It showed it earlier when I was playing, but oh god, it's so bad. They're releasing Zelda ones next to the Skyward Sword. Mm -hmm. Remaster. Oh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I was excited at first, but then I thought to myself, I have. But I have a Joy Con. Eight <laughs> pairs of Joy Cons between me and my sister. Now, are, and they that... just don't work. And I swear to you, I don't touch my Joy Cons at all. And I took them out to play Just Dance. The drift was horrendous. Paul was there that day when it happened. No, yeah, it it's horrendous. It's so bad. See, this I is have the it... Pokemon Switch Lite. No drift at all. Which I is shocking. No drift at all. Okay. I play now, more on the Switch Lite than the actual Switch because of it. When I play the Switch, I hook it up to the TV. I can't take the Joy-Cons. So you would prefer that over the actual Switch because of just the Joy-Cons itself ruining an experience that you want to have. Yeah, cause... It looks great. It feels great. The controller, the joysticks just feel better. And I don't want to describe it without someone actually playing it. It just feels better. And how much is a Switch Lite? It's like the Switch Lite is... Oh, it? it? it's 200 Yeah, you got it for 200 So you're basically getting half price from a bundle, essentially, to get probably what you're gonna, we're going to consider a better console. Pretty much. But you, the only thing you do not get in this case is the actual docking bay that the switch would go into to put it on a tv right That's yeah cool. you can't dock it at all but honestly i would prefer to play the games that i play on there mm -hmm. handheld uh you know what it's sad for me to say this and i'm gonna admit this but i haven't really used that dock ever since i have my switch because the issue for me is that when i when i was playing animal crossing um I, you know i was taking the entire switch or i started initially using their um Within the bundle, they have that controller that doesn't really have that, you know, you're supposed to slip your Joy Cons into. And I was using that at first, and I was like, okay, like, it's like I have like decently sized hands. So they can grasp the actual controller itself. And I was like, okay, perfect size for my hands, I think. It's good enough. But the issue was that it wasn't like, you know, whether or not it felt good to me using these Joy Cons. It was actually that these Joy Cons separately have batteries. And the only way you can charge them, at least from what I know, is that you, you have, have to dock them. You have to dock them. That's it. In the dock, yep. You have to dock them. To me, feels like such a tedious thing. A hassle. That needs to be addressed. I feel like this should not have been the case. And that's why they made the, the Switch Lite, then, I'm guessing. Right? But the I Switch Lite is for like little kids who want to take it everywhere, and it's like a more affordable console. It's like the 2DS, basically. But here's my thing. 
Is there more battery life in that, or is it, are they going to be about the same? I think it's the same. Okay, see, that's a great question, because I play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon on it, and I don't keep my brightness that high to the point my eyes are on fire, but, you know, I keep it in the middle to be able to see the screen. It doesn't... It doesn't die that fast. Unless you're running a game like maybe Breath of the Wild, it's going to explode. Mm -hmm. That's more of like a TV type game to play. But if I'm playing like Project Diva, the Hatsune Miku game, it's not dying, dying. But it, you know, the battery is going down because of the graphics. That's interesting. See, that worries me though, because I want to get Monster Hunter Rise. But knowing, like, because this is going to be a game I'm going to want to play on the television. Like, and that's where, like, I have this issue that arises because now I'm going to have to be using these Joy-Cons in a controller that they're going to die all the time. And it makes me, like, not get that full experience. And I'm only saying this because Monster Hunter World was released on Steam. And it was maybe my first Monster Hunter I was getting back into after a couple of years. And to me, it was breathtaking to actually play a game like that and have it running on essentially something that looks like it looked amazing. It felt it felt great. It felt amazing. And it was being played on a, uh, on a PC. Like, what more could you ask for? Now, I wish something like that had been on the PC. I felt like that was a bit of a miss on Nintendo's case or even maybe in Capcom's case to actually let um, like Steam allow this and have more accessibility across all uh, platforms. And it stinks because now I'm gonna know, if I know, you know, I have to play it on the Switch and I don't have an issue like that much, but knowing if my Joy-Cons are gonna end up dying, then I'm always gonna have to keep this dock in and then eventually my Switch will die and it's gonna be a constant cycle of just, you know, recharging and then play, you know, playing to recharge, playing to recharge. And I don't wanna end up having to deal with that. Yeah, well, the, there's the, the Pro thing. Controller. Like, yeah. I got the Pro Controller, but it's an extra $60. And if you want one certified by Nintendo, it's run by batteries. Like, actual batteries, like the Xbox 360 controller. Oh, okay, wait, so so technically, so technically, what you're saying is that there are... It's only, like, $10 less. So, you either choose a rechargeable battery, or you choose replacing your batteries every five minutes. Every five... <sighs> No, that, that's like an exaggeration because oh, yeah, my yeah, Xbox yeah, yeah. controller dies so fast. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. No, no, it doesn't do that. I actually have never owned one of those, personally. I own the rechargeable ones, I have the Pro Controller, but you shouldn't have to pay an extra $60 to have a controller like that. Yeah, it is kind of absurd to get a new controller for like about almost the price of a video game itself. Just yeah. for essentially what is hardware, but... That it, it is what it is, but I also feel like the Nintendo ends up competing with a like for all the, like these are like things that Nintendo has to do to compete and make a profit against like Microsoft, Sony, and even just like the computer um, era that we're going through right now itself. Where honestly, when you really think about it, unless you you if you can't get your game on a computer. That's the, probably the more or less reason why you have that console is just to actually be able to access that one game you'd want to play. Otherwise, you're more, you're more than likely to be owning a computer and playing it on a PC. So, these are like the struggles that this company has been going through for about a couple years now, and it's going to continue facing as we go into the future. Am, am I the only one who feels like they've been going downhill ever since the Switch? Is that just me? Now, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't think it was the case with the Switch. Honestly, th I felt like when I, like in my case, there was a reason why I didn't get the Wii U. And I didn't know even what a Wii was. A like, I knew what I liked about the Wii. I didn't know, understand why they were having a Wii U. That's where I felt like I had to stop. I got my 3DS and stuff like that, which I believe was like after the Wii. And in between some time here and there, that's when I was deciding to maybe get back into nintendo and bring my my faith in them again but i was more or less wait like around the you know i was more or less settled around the hype of the new animal crossing and i felt like that was where i had to land it on top of it well here's the crazy thing though ds virtual console worked really well on the wii u they have a few pokemon games on there they have explorers of sky i think and one of the pokemon ranger games which is really cool because you have that handhold, that handheld 
screen in your hands and then you have the rest on the TV. Mm -hmm. I so when you're playing Mystery Dungeon, you could have like your team displayed on the handheld and you could have the game displayed on the TV itself like going through the dungeon. Mm -hmm. That's why I think the Wii U is one of the best virtual consoles. I mean, 3DS, we had Pokemon Red and Blue, we had Yellow, we had Crystal, we had Gold and Silver. Crystal, Gold, and Silver, we were finally able to get the Celebi event that was exclusive in Japan. And it's shiny unlocked, meaning people could shiny hunt for it. So there were people going on like this craze to shiny hunt for this Celebi because this event has never been in the U.S., Wait, there are region locked events? What? Yes. Why? We have. Yeah, okay. That's a whole nother thing to go into because they made very poor decisions even back then. Why would they. I. I think I actually know what she is going on about, though, in this regard. I remember this being the case with, like, more promotional. Like, um, promotional events being. Like, you'd actually have to go to a GameStop to go, or like a Toys R Us to go experience a promotional event. I remember this being the case with when, like, you know, in Pokemon, I remember having to get, I believe it was, um, either it was a, I, I can't remember if it was a Dark Ride, if it was either a Dark Ride event or if it was for a certain type of Pikachu that knew a move that would, was basically not even in its typing. Or normal evolutionary oh like um, surf or fly yeah. or something yeah it was like surf pikachu like something like that and they had this event back then and i was like okay this is really cool and as a kid i got to experience you know finding out what this one legendary pokemon dark rye was and i felt like there was like a lot of hidden things here and there but they're only excluded or you know included when you go to these events and if you're not in a certain region you're actually not going to ever experience these events and then that's when you have to do online trading and things like that maybe even get a chance at something like the pokemon that you've been looking for or these special pokemon in that case or the event pokemon well arceus was actually not released in america Wait. as an event Ar arceus the, Az the azure flute that i have on my games that was Japan exclusive, I believe. So summoning Arceus, like, you know, the events, John, with Shaman okay. and all that stuff, where you get Oak's letter and you go to Route 226 or something yeah. like that behind the Pokemon League, and then you mm -hmm. encounter Shaman. It's like this whole thing you had to do back then. Or the Rotom key, where you go into the Galactic Headquarters and you're able to, like, change Rotom's form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes we sense. don't Wait. have those events anymore. Did you say the Arceus one? I'm sorry. Arceus, yes. Arceus Azor Flute was blocked off in the US, and the only way to get Arceus was through, like, a promotional event, like Toys R Us. Like, you go in, and they, you know, transmit it to you through one of those, like, little cartridges so, they had hidden. I remember it actually being a thing you could get in North America, and the only reason I remember this was because they... This is along the line of these, like, stranger Pokemon games, but they were really good Pokemon games, though. There's, like, Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon, like, XD Gale of Darkness, right? There was another Pokemon game that came out on the Wii, and it was a game I don't even remember the name of. Poke Park? No, no, no. Battle it was, Revolution. It was Park. Battle Revolution. Poke Revolu Park. <laughs> yes, Battle Revolution. So uh, in Battle Revolution, they had a there was a store in the game, and you could transmit items out of the store on Pokemon and send them to your actual um, your DS in this case. Yeah, and vice versa, you could copy your Pokemon. It's not going to transfer the Pokemon into it, but you could yeah. copy your Pokemon oh, yeah, and then you're, you're right. able to use the Pokemon in game instead of using rentals. You're right about that. But I remember that this was being cool. the case because there is an Azor flute in that game. So the only way, like, I'm only saying this because I just remember this now, and I was a little bit surprised that the, maybe, like, you know, this is just like a lack of knowledge. But the only way if this is the case, and if I remember correctly, still, is that you have to play this game to get the azor flute so then you would transfer it into your game and that's how you get the rcs but then that, wait a minute that begs the question of i have to buy a whole nother game and i have to hold i have to own a whole nother console in that case just to achieve one pokemon from the base game which you can't even do normally and i'm, I'm only remembering this because it's a just like first it's like slight absurd games in this case 
and I just remember owning it, and I felt like it was really cool. Like the the like the um the ability to see your Pokemon in a 3D battle on the big screen, and how everything was like animated at that time. It looked really good. Um, and I just remember that being the case. I remember that being how you could get Arceus was they had an Azor flu in the store in like an in-game no. store. No. Right? I just oh. looked it up. It's not in Battle Revolution. I don't know what item you're talking about. Maybe I'm losing it. I, <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm losing it. Hold on. You I, can I'll... only you can only get the Azor Flute in the U.S. if you use Action Replay or you bypass the system. Like right now, there's actual servers up. If you change your Wi-Fi box to WEP and you're able to enter your WEP code of your Wi-Fi into your DS, you're able to enter those servers and receive any mystery gift all around the world so that's what i did those servers okay. are still up so i changed my wi-fi one of my wi-fi's to web key and then i put the web key code into my um ds with the dns and then i was able to get the azor fluid i was able to get um oak's letter rotom key some events that were exclusive in japan i got yellow forest for the Pokey Walker on Hardcore Soul Silver. I got the Dark Cry event. I don't remember which one that was. I think Dark Cry was actually locked from us, unless I'm thinking of something else. But I know you can't get Dark Cry legally now without doing that really weird glitch hack that people have on YouTube. Okay. I'm, I'm, I still feel like. Yeah, no, I there's this super weird glitch hack that people do to get to the island that Dark is in. And I sat there as a kid watching it, and I'm going, what is this? How did people find this out? You're walking on water. I have You're to... breaking the game to get to Dark Cry. I have to say, this is the weirdest thing to me because I'm the only one here who's ne who's like never plays Pokemon games or anything. The only one I've ever played is Sword and Shield, which probably was not the best to start with. Yeah, that was my fault. Honestly, what I felt like was not a great Pokemon game, too, and maybe this is my opinion, and this is just because it was capitalizing on the idea of Pokemon Go, was the Pokemon Go, Eevee, and Pikachu. Oh, yeah, the Eevee and Pikachu thing. Wasn't that, like, the third remake of the original the Let's game? Go. Yeah, okay, so we have Red and Blue, we have Fire Red and Leaf Green, and then we have Let's Go. But honestly, in my opinion, I think Fire Red and Leaf Green is the best form of Kanto remakes, not Let's Go. So if you want to play Kanto, play Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh yeah, I forgot, you can't access that either. There's no way, unless you pirate it. So, ultimately, really, supply Oh, that's demand. another, that's another and thing. Lack of you have to pirate it to play it. Nintendo's piracy things and DMCA. I got DMCA'd by them so many times. <laughs> I'm proud to say it at this point because they wrongly DMCA'd me so many times. Which is kind of insane if you think about it. And you were, what, what were exactly were you doing again though? Okay, so no, no, no. Let me let me explain it. So Sword and Shield leaks were rampant during that time out like crazy twitter pages were being made it was being posted everywhere youtube soundtracks you name it out there just i don't even know how they appeared but it was worse than sun and moon's leaks on 4chan so they were dmcaing everyone who had either like a tag of pokemon any mention of any pokemon they will target anyone who had any name of any pokemon it could be like pikachu or something boom dmca so what happened was i had a few illustrations on my red bubble shop for about like two years or so up on there being sold like it's my artwork it's not even remotely similar to mm -hmm. pokemon's art style i got at least 15 emails from red bubble stating that i got dmca'd by nintendo and there was no reason given. All of my artworks were removed from my Redbubble. But now if you had done it, if you put everything back up, you'll, you probably wouldn't get it. I'll get DMCA'd again. You would yeah. still get DMCA'd. How long has this been from this? About a year and a half now. Now, why would they do that? That's what I don't Because know. they're so stuck up about their DMCA's. They shut down anything. They shut down fan games. Yeah, yeah don't you know if you breathe Nintendo, we, we get banned? They have shut down so many Pokemon fan games, it's not even funny. They, I think they shut down Pixelmon, the Minecraft Pixelmon server. No. I believe they shut it down because there was a YouTuber that you I follow. Joking. 
It might be back up as, like, you know, low-key. But, yeah, I remember they were getting shut down. I, I don't think, remember the well, reason, but well, Pixelmon was shutting down. I, well, I still think you can... I mean, you were able to still download Pixelmon as a mod for yourself, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that you were able but, to do. That's a mod, a, but... For a public server... No. Yeah, no? Nah. No. Nah. Nah. Gone. I mean, they're it's just, just... Not, I don't know. Maybe it's just the idea of protecting their privacy and just their property in that case. But at that point, it's more or less like, do you care about protecting your privates? Uh, you know, um your privacy and your like the private property that you own but it's, it's fair use your but it's about or more or less about keeping your fan base right? it's not being used as a weapon there's nothing derogatory yeah. or offensive in it yeah exactly. and then there's what the that mother that mother four yeah game and then it got re it got renamed and remade it yeah, because like it, it was oh, a oh man what was it called like game. odyssey or something like that i it got i think that was it pretty sure it was something like that something with an o but yeah it looked great and then they just shut it down so they had to change up everything still mother inspired but, but it's not mother four anymore not what people, it's just itself it's not the original iteration of what it had been yeah no pretty much all because nintendo has to protect what they only have left and the rights that they own to but they don't even care about earthbound and all that stuff well, when uh, when have you seen f-zero or earthbound right now outside of smash that's name one instance no that was the only thing i was going to say the only thing i was going to say is that they have they're just you know iconic smash characters and outside of that that's pretty much it we don't know what's happening would it be interesting to see nintendo release a new mother game I think it would be. It would be for they me. They still haven't localized Mother 3. It's a whole meme with Reggie. Reggie, when is Mother 3 releasing? Oh, yeah. That was a thing. You remember that? But do you feel like Mother is a game of genre that you can't even consider like in today's society? Or would you think that maybe if they had done a bit of rebranding on what could be a game that they could release for a Mother series, that people would actually then want to acquire that kind of game. I, feel like I, have, a I have a awesome. question for you. I have a question for you. Why does Undertale exist? Yeah, I was about to say, what about Undertale? Why does Undertale exist? Now, wait, I'll, here's a good question. Undertale, Undertale was inspired by Earthbound. But is it on the Switch? Yes. Yes. It, it is on everything Undertale now. and oh. Delta Rune are on the Switch now. It just released on the Xbox, too. So they really- okay, so that game's being pushed now. Okay, that's true. And that's the alternative. Because Undertale is fantastic. And that's the yeah. alternative answer to Maybe. what happens to an Earthbound game. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if members from Earthbound, Flight Team, and ended up going for the new Delta Rune, and they're going to work towards that. I, feel I like would, that be would be perfectly like okay with that. That would be the love child of a game like Mother and all of its series at that point. Putting all of the hard work and dedication from a game like that in a series that... Not, you know, you can't really do it anymore, I'm guessing, or at least Nintendo hasn't tried. And now it's just being put towards it. No. Isn't Nintendo helping with Delta Rune? I don't know. I No, it's like, what's his face? It's like, Toby Fox. Toby? Is, he's having his, he's making his own team of it. Of just, literally, if I wanted to right now be on that team, I could literally just be like, hey, Toby, can I be on that team? Th that no, it's not that easy. Well, I, well, if I show I have qualifications to, like, I am competent with game development. You know what I mean. You get what I mean. But they could use all the help they can get to make basically the project that would, ex you know, that would basically ex exceed past another. I mean, Delta Rune Chapter One was great already with the team they had. Now here, wait, oh, so they're doing so well. Good. That music was so good. <laughs> they did great. Truly, it is interesting how nintendo will end up trying to get past something like that especially like a game like that ends up beating out a game that's you know granted it's been so old and it's been long outdated nowadays and they are they even re have they remastered those in any sort of way no right the mother games no no, no. Right? They, they they, what about kid icarus oh yeah that's a game that exists the, i the, think the original game or kid well, there's um, Kid Icarus Uprising yeah, on, the on the 3DS. That game was amazing. And that I was a unique game that I would play over and over again. 
Now, do you feel like they should make more from that genre, or like, like smaller genre? Like, okay, I guess like, um, no, they I, the Switch came with P uh, Pikmin Three, I believe, right? That was one of the Switch's um, newer games when they uh, came out. No, no Pikmin no, was... Pikmin Three just released. That was another remake I that or was on the Wii a port. U, or was... Oh, they did that. Pik again? Pikmin Pik Three was on the Wii U. So. Oh, that's what I'm thinking okay, of. so then how long has it been for like that genre game? I feel like that game is like a series. I bro, don't series that, know. That's, that's a series that like doesn't get enough love. I feel like that one. Granted, like it's very inspired. I feel like alongside of like these games, Starcraft that are kind of, and like, stuff like that. Um. Well, no, not well. Yes, if you're t if you're thinking about it in real time strategy, then yes. But I feel like. There are similar-ish games where, like, it sets a universe that your characters will, you know, you're, um, you're gonna adventure through, like, kind of like Mother, but, like, how long did it take from Pikmin 3 to Pikmin 3, right? Well, how big of a gap was there in between those two releases? Dang. I don't know, was it, like, was it, like, 2014, 2015 for Pikmin 3? I have no idea I'm gonna be and real. I'm only, I don't I, know. I've I, never played Pikmin. Neither have I. I'm only saying because I believe Pikmin 2 was a GameCube game. And then... Really? Yes. Pikmin wow. I know Pikmin 3 is on the Wii. My That's... brother has it. Pikmin 2 is a GameCube game. and that, Like, granted, Pikmin 1 was also a GameCube game. And I believe Pikmin 2 was the exact same thing. And... Or it might be... It might... You know what? This is something I have to look up right now really fast before... I just like push anything else, but you guys can keep talking about um, Nintendo, I guess. Why look this up real fast? <laughs> uh, what else is there? Nintendo. <sighs> I can't really. I don't know. Well, we talk about the Joy Cons are garbage. Oh, wait. Hold on. How old is Pikmin Three? You're not gonna believe this when I tell you. This is Whoa. 2012. It's like I remember it. It had. It was Pikmin Two was released in 2004 and are you Pikmin joking 3 oh. was released in 2013 it has <laughs> what it has now been seven years and I, I think they did a remaster of pikmin 3 i forget did they, they? Did a pikmin 3, like, they did a deluxe edition i think that was on the switch right now that's on the switch. yes that's on the switch but for 60 bucks right for 60 and of course, <laughs> for a remake of course right that's how it goes um but there was a gap at one point and maybe this is just because they were pushing other things. Like this is like this is like that time period in between where there's like brawl, right? When that was like I think like 2008 or something like that. That was 2008, 2009. Like, yeah, 2008. Right, along those okay. And in between those two areas, like Pikmin is a game. Like I feel like that series gets abandoned. Like it actually just gets like there's no Pikmin 2 remaster if I think I don't know if there is one or not. And there probably will never be a Pikmin 2 remaster or anything along those lines. And I think Pikmin 2 is a great game, like in my opinion. Oh, here's a series they threw into the ditch. WarioWare. Oh, oh yeah, what happened? Uh -huh. They had WarioWare Gold for the 3DS. Full voice acting. Everything thrown to the 3DS. At its last strings. Persona Q2. Persona Q2 is really good. Thrown to the 3DS. There was no investment. They thought there was no investment. Atlas to the point there was no English voice acting either, which is really sad in my opinion. That is I, th I thought there was no voice acting at all. Was there was there Japanese any? voice acting. There was. I feel like that's definitely yes. an issue though too. If you don't have an English version, I mean, I can understand like with localization and like maybe if there's not enough resources to then a like to push for English yeah. voice acting. Like, Some things have. But I feel like, like that. that's a standard nowadays that you should at least have the option of giving. An American audience English voice acting. Well, a lot of people but, don't like English voice acting. That is true. Is, Some of them are really bad. Well, They're very angry and radical about English voice acting. I don't think it, that's the case. I think no. It, oh no, you haven't seen that side. It's have, bad. Have you seen ninety percent of animes out there right now? <laughs> um, it's horrible. I, you have no idea the harassment that voice actors have to deal with. It's horrible. I think when it comes to anime, in this case, maybe. But that's no, it's it's about. video games too. There are people who receive death threats for it for no reason. But why is that the case, right? It's like they just hate it. They just I don't know. They just think that Japanese voice acting is the way to go. 
I mean, I will good. admit, there are some things where it's like a lot of Japanese voice actors are way better than English, I will admit. Like, like Yakuza. As much as I, I love Mark Hamill as an actor, when he voiced Majima, I can't see him as a Majima compared to his real vo voice Well, what actor. about blind people? Blind what? people would like to have an oh, English dub. I didn't even think about- oh god. Jeez. It's accessibility. Oh. Yeah. So the only way you'd be able to access at that point is that you'd have to know, know the, the native language of where that game came from at that point. And Which that, is really sad, because that's, that's why English voice acting is really important. Or voice acting in other languages other than the original language. It's amazing. How it's all ends up tying back together and everything works. And everything ends up needing each other. Needing that synergy that ends up formulating everything that could potentially be reasons of why things like Nintendo fall short. And now I just look at it as I look at the time, like, it's actually been an hour, I'm surprised. Yeah. Get all these topics. <laughs> like, I, I didn't think we would. I honestly thought that there were going to be so many more things in my head that could possibly be brought up. But, you know, they kind of, they must have, like, flew out. Who knows? Yeah, pretty much, they just flew out of us. I mean, do we have any more to say? Can we think of anything else? Um, I, can... I don't really know. How you walk into GameStop and literally the Pokemon event now is they give you like this card and then you walk out with it and now mystery gifts are limited because of those cards oh. so people take like five of them. Yes, that's part of their supply and demand thing. Remember the- People take five of the mystery gift cards and then I could walk and be like, hey, I want this mystery gift. Oh no, sorry, we just gave out all of them. Okay, great. The um, the Pokemon cards they were giving out like McDonald's or something. No, I'm, no, I'm talking about the mystery gift events. Wait, wait, wait what's those? I don't play Pokemon, okay. I don't know. So mystery gift is basically like you receive this item or this Pokemon, specially distributed by the Pokemon company, or like Game Freak, whatever it is. They host like this event. Back then, it used to be Oak's Letter, um, Rotom Key. You had events from Emerald, I, I think Deoxys. No, was it Deoxys? I know there was a Lugia event. There was a Lugia event in Gen 3, but you would go to, um, like, GameStop or something, and they would have this cartridge, like, this DS cartridge, that transmitted this infrared signal, where you would select receive wirelessly on the mystery gift screen, and then you receive the mystery gift, because you went to GameStop and you were in range of that signal. So, there was an unlimited supply of that Pokemon. One per game. Obviously, you can't get multiples per game. But it was one per game, unlimited supply, constantly running, and everyone could get it if you go to GameStop. Now, if you go to GameStop, hey, I want uh, the mystery gift. Okay, how many do you want? Like, they literally ask you, how many cards do you want? Yeah, and then know. people would give them away on Twitter, or sell them or do like youtube videos of like giveaways and it just didn't make sense to me because now like people the... are limited on receiving that mystery gift and yeah sometimes it's something stupid like um the typical mythical or legendary that we've received so many times in the past but you know it's nice to have i like collecting the mystery gifts but my point is it shouldn't have to be that way where it's code cards now Oh yeah, like it's just the, all the they're supply and demand. Th and, like the um, like back when I said the McDonald's thing, didn't they start limiting them? But even then, once you got there, they were already out. So it didn't <laughs> five, matter. five per person. Yeah, that's gonna stop them. That five. Is, that's still five. A, that's still happy a lot meal for one toys person. per person. Yeah, I remember when we went in, they told us two different stories. One story was, oh, they didn't come in yet, meaning the shipment. Meanwhile, they were on display in the Happy Meal section. Yeah, like, like that yeah. little display where they show the toys for that month. And another story was, we're sold out. And the sign on the glass next to the cash register said, Pokemon cards, five per person. And I was like, are you kidding me? Five? No one should be able to buy five of those. Like, if it's just a regular... Like, I, I don't know, like, they had the soul from Disney toys left over from, like, two Happy Meals ago. And 
they had nothing. They had no Pokemon things, and I ended up not even getting it at all. Like, it was just not worth the hunt, because people were buying them left and right. You can buy the Happy Meal toys separately. They're $2. So, buying five of them, that's $10. That's nothing to scalpers. So, they'll just repeatedly go to other stores. They will hunt to the ends of the earth to even buy these and sell them online, because there are people who are actually desperate to collect this stuff, and will pay $100 for a $2 McDonald's set. Which is really sad. So people really are just kind of psycho. There is that idea that you can make more off of something that shouldn't be the case. Wow. Same thing happens. with like the the PS5 stuff going on, where like um, what was it like like we know Siv, our friend Siv kept trying to get a P. He's been dying to get a PS5 for the past year almost, and he's just like d he's so desperate. He's trying to offer like. Other friends like, oh, I'll give you my my VR, I'll give you my PS4, I'll give you my Xbox, I'll give you I my. I think everything. that was a joke. No, that was, I no, think that was a that joke. Was, that was not. A, he was dead serious. He really. Are you serious? He, I want the PS5 too, but I'm not gonna like, like trade my heart and soul for it. Like, I really do want to play the Demon Souls remake just like him, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it like that. I'm not that crazy. It's just so easy for the scalpers to set up bots, and even if it's like two three per person it doesn't matter to them they're still gonna buy it and even they're like, still gonna set up those bots the bots go in the second it detects it's up and no one gets it i know like even um even joe is having trouble joe is having trouble like the demon souls remake I, I would gladly help him with it because i mean i played every other dark souls game i just haven't played demon souls i would help him because he i don't know why he picked the hardest dark souls souls born game to start off with, that that's that's a whole other discussion for another episode. Jeez, we, keep, <laughs> we keep finding more and more. <laughs> oh. it's pretty, yeah, I'm burnt out. I won't lie. I'm not lying. All these topics have burnt me out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good first episode. I think it was a pretty good. I think honestly, I mean, for... we could keep going a little bit if you guys have anything left about Nintendo. Do you want to talk about the Pokemon stuff? We can. We could just put it right now in this first episode. Alright, I have a lot to talk about. Oh boy. John knows what I'm talking about. Oh. Then there's me, completely lost as the Pokemon. I would definitely- So, I I'm gonna- I'm gonna start off. Fun fact! The Pokewalker from HeartGold SoulSilver is the most accurate pedometer in the world. The what? How, how do we pedometer. Put a it, university actually tested that. Put it really? put it in the words of the common man who doesn't know Pokemon. Okay. What's, what's a pedometer? So, Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver came out with this box set every time you would buy Heart Gold Soul Silver. It's this little feature called the Poke Walker where you transfer one of your Pokemon into this little Pokemon, like this Pokeball type oh, device. Oh. You could probably pull up a picture of it, Paul. It's. I I this little I, Pokeball looking, I I yeah, you've seen it because I own like five of them. It's like GameStop. <laughs> I've seen a few. Is this the, now? Is this the Pokeball that literally would level up your Pokemon if you walked over? Yes, yes, so, and you can catch Pokemon and find items in it, and then you can communicate with other people who have Pokewalkers, and you'd receive gifts from each other. So it would count your steps, count the amount of days. You did your steps, and every it would count like um a weekly basis, like weekday, the well, day one you'd have like five thousand steps, day two you have twenty thousand. It was really cool. I thought having that around in like second or third grade was it second or third grade? Yeah, it was second or third grade. I had them on my belt. It came with like this attachment where you could have the strap around your wrist. Or you could unscrew the back and switch it out for a clip that would clip onto your belt or your backpack or something. It was super cool. I, I thought it was, like, one of the greatest things Pokemon Heads done. And then they came out with, like, that little Bluetooth Pokeball. What was it for Let's Go? It was it's like 30, this, I know it was, like, it was expensive, that little thing. It was, like, $40, $50, and it was this Pokeball that was similar to the Pokewalker, but it did nothing like the Pokewalker. Like, I felt it didn't top what the Pokewalker could do, and it would die in, like, two or three hours. Compared to the Pokewalker that used a watch battery, and I'm not kidding with you, I've had these Pokewalkers for years and years to come, and they've only died on me three times. 
Three times. How? Within 10, 11 years. Three times. That just goes to show you how simplicity is just. The key. quality is amazing on these Pokewalkers. I've even dropped them multiple times. The screen would stay together, it wouldn't break, nothing would chip, nothing would shatter. It's just quality material, and you'd pay $40. $40 for the Pokey Walker, the extra accessories that came with it, and the game. Now, All for $40. It's an interesting concept, right? Now, they started doing these concepts of, like, introducing, like, these walkers, right? Where you can essentially, you know, track how many steps you've taken in the real life. Now, is this why they were able to go ahead and release the... Pokemon Go? On, yeah, yeah, Pokemon Go. Like, is that what, like, they, they you know, they, they were experimenting and they thought, like, okay, like, people really were using this. And they thought maybe enough feedback came in that they could actually make this into a legitimate product. And in this case, that it happened. And then the phenomenon of Pokemon Go was a thing. Or, you know, you had people who were going to be, you know, so desperate enough to catch a Pokemon on the phone to walk into, like, oncoming traffic and such. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, it I happened. Was that, that was, was horrible. When that first it came out, oh, um, everyone was in Richmond Town playing Pokemon Go. It was fun though. I will knock it off. That lie. was insane. Back when I used to do, it, I wouldn't it be able so to fun. drive. I remember when there was a community day and I was going to tutoring at the library where Richmond Town is. I couldn't even drive because there were people walking in the street for community day. <laughs> it was so, like, mind-boggling. And then I would be like, oh, should I, like, I don't know, join in after tutoring? But, like, it was just so crazy to see so many people get out like that. But this is going to be a horrible take. I liked Pokemon Go when it started, but nothing will beat my Pokewalker. I feel my Pokewalker made me really active as a kid. That was my main motivation to get active. I mean, at least you see... Like, well, we this was granted before Pokemon Go, right? So them encouraging, like, a healthy lifestyle and encouraging walking. And that's, like, I feel like definitely, like, something that you could say that a company did right. I Pokemon took it to Go, school. Yeah, I took all of them to school. But you have to understand at the end of the day, though, like that it only has so much like limitations. And Pokemon Go, they expanded on it entirely to make it more or less have it's enough content to engage players for you know months on end, as long as they continue these healthy lifestyle choices and they're walking and engaging in that regard. But it also comes with, you know, the dangers of real life, and sometimes you just have to know when to put down the phone. Yeah, like, like there, I, there's stories about people going crazy, like, they'll go, like, oh, it's, like, you know, two in the morning in the middle of, like, you know, not at the, exactly the best place in town, but there's a... Someone give me a big Pokemon jump uh. gym thing, I don't... Oh, like the the gyms? Yeah, like those things, the battles. The raids, yeah, the raids. Bear with bear with me for not playing for not knowing Pokemon. It's okay. No, we haven't played Pokemon Go in such a long time. It would be like the raid battle where they'd have like the limited legendary out for a while, yeah, and then you go to the things. raid battle. Yeah, those. I haven't played it since when I went to Saint jo Saint John's Queens for my classes. That was. Long time we ago. haven't played it since our two-month anniversary picnic. Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's... That was almost two years ago. Yeah, because we were in Wolf's Pond, and we were just playing it, because we didn't know what else to do. Like, oh, oh my god, it wasn't a boring date, but, like, you know, we were outside, it was nice out, it was the summer. You know what, I think... Why not, like, walk around and do something? But that was, like, the trend of that time. Pokemon yeah. Go, right. I'm like it'd be like okay, me and my buddies are gonna go for Pokemon Go. You know, it was the only thing that I had an issue with. Maybe is that they decided to. I mean, it maybe this is just because they wanted people to be competitive enough and encourage the walking. Um, but like the 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 three parties that you could choose between your faction. Oh yeah. Oh my, the teams. And I'm only saying, and I'm only saying this because I remember, and in this case, it's Richmond Town. And 
Were there people fighting? Yeah, I do you remember people, people fighting. I remember when people were arguing over the teams. It see, and this is but like a game about Pokemon that's supposed to include, like and yes, normally the game is competitive. That's how it's supposed to be, right? Especially when you go to if you actually decide to play at a competitive level and go to these events and conventions to do the these Pokemon things. at Worlds. The, the... I wanted to go to Worlds in 2019. I'm sad that I missed it because it was four hours away from us. It was in Washington D.C. Wait, is it actually called Worlds? That was a league joke. Yeah, wait. Worlds. Oh wait, actually... no, no, no. It's called Pokemon Worlds. I'm World Championship. A league joke. Oh, I don't no, no, know. no. It's it's Pokemon Worlds. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't know. I mean, I always felt like that was cool. Never actually looked into the, like the professionals. Well, they had a special remix theme for the final. Um. Uh, what, what? Oh, like Fina the, finals, the finals, the finals, yeah. It was a remix theme of versus Blue. You remember the spiky-haired rival from the first yeah. game? Yeah, it was a remix of his champion theme. And it was really cool. They would remix it after every time they had um a new game released. I'm cu actually curious about something. Do you know more about the professional like level of Pokemon, though? In terms of like um, I was in the competitive scene for a long time. That's kind of how I met Paul and Joey, because okay. I would completely wipe them in a Nintendo club. It was very funny. I did not like the amount the amount, the amount of frustration. Them, no, you didn't. But I completely wiped out other people who played, and they would get very frustrated with me. I used to be very competitive with Pokemon. Like I'd have my builds and everything, and all of my like competitive Pokemon in one box, and I would play online stuff like that. So. If you, like, at least maybe have some idea of what it is. I have uh, a lot of knowledge about it. What Does it still exist? And I'm not saying, like, online... Worlds? Yes. Or, yeah, I mean... Yeah, like, they have the World Championships. Is it, or is it, like, a dying... Because I'm not entirely sure. Like, I really would not know about how the Pokemon scene is, right? If we're going to talk about a professional, like, competitive side. I don't know if they're really... If it's, like, a struggling community in that regard okay so here's the thing it's very funny because when we watch league matches right you have like the people okay some people playing the meta and then you have some random people picking like zaya or something off meta okay there's a lot of meta picks and it becomes so repetitive watching those matches to the point you want to turn it off so it's saying, the same. It's the same move sets, same builds. So it's, it's, the, it's just, really just the same Pokemon in a six in a six you know Pokemon team format. Because it's super restricted. So compared to League, we have the draft, right? You could ban who you want. Pokemon, they have their own set of restrictions before you even enter playing and then, and then in the world. Play, and you have to play within. You have to play along their lines. No legendaries, no mythicals. They ban a few other Pokemon that are in the Pokédex. You can't use certain items, you can't use certain moves. So it's it's just very limited. It's tight in that space and it's not entertaining as much as League. So isn't there, do you think isn't that there... What was that one Pokemon everyone that used the dragon thing scabs something with Ness? The blue the blue dragon thingy. Oh, is this Kyogre? Blue dragon? Kyogre, yes. Kyogre was a huge meta pick. Is that what Especially that during the time of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire when the Primals came out. Are we had Primal, Kyogre, and um, Groudon. So ultimately, it's just the idea. Like, in a competitive sense, they just have to- they, they do a lot of limited- like, limitation, and that kind of ruins the scene. Right? That kind of ruins the- like, the pro scene of it. And yeah, we don't- they don't receive, like, updated nerfs or anything like League, but it's just, just yeah. very tiring to see the same thing over and over again. And the only kind of way you would probably even see a nerf or a buff of anything or any- whatever the case might Next be- Next game. Is- yeah. Is in an Next entirely game. new, yeah. you know, addition to the franchise. Which, which is very funny, because they're- Gengar used to have Shadow Tag. I believe. Was it Shadow? No. Gengar had Levitate, which would okay. completely change him being able to be on the field for Worlds. Then they changed it to another ability. He can't have Levitate ever again in the newest games. I think they stopped it after Gen 6. But, so that's the Was case it Gen for 6? But, like, a Pokemon balancing team, like, or at least in, in the you know, regards of a competitive scene, notice this. 
right? And they were able to, like, recognize... They okay, shot... Yeah, they shot Gengar down. Because otherwise, let's be for real, if this Pokemon still had this ability, you would probably still see him in every single game. Oh, right? uh, yes! They nerfed Mega Kangaskhan, too! Kangaskhan has a Mega Evolution, and they nerfed it, too, because, um... You hit two times as Mega Kangaskhan, so you have the baby what? and you have Kangaskhan itself. What's a Kanga... Kanga... what? <laughs> it's a Gen oh, 2 Pokemon. It's, 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 the, it's uh, the kangaroo with the, kangaroo the baby in his pouch. Yeah. That was a super meta pick back then. Now that got nerfed with the damage in the new games. So they understand. Like, they have an idea of, like, things... But, like, you know what it is, though? I think they know, like, when they release a Pokemon game, that there's gonna be a lot of broken... Or, like, a lot of things that they're going to end up having to limitate, and then that's what they allow in the pro and the professional scene. And then, whatever they don't fix out is something that they end up just adjusting with tournament rules. I mean, I've seen a lot of stupid things, like Smeargle. Moody Smeargle was, like, a crazy pick. I don't even know if people play Moody Smeargle now. Moody is basically an ability where, um, two stats, um, a stat is raised by two. But a stat, another stat, is lowered by uh, one or two. I believe it's one or two levels. Mm -hmm. So it's like RNG gamble, right there. What you so want to do? Pretty much in the, in the in the idea of that is the idea of a high roll. And if you yeah. high roll perfectly in the city, and if you high roll, you're essentially at a much higher advantage. Which, which in competitive sense, like it's high risk, high reward. But if there's not much risk involved because at the end of the day you maybe just have one stat like removed kind of on you and then you just play the game like oh. but like like okay maybe it's just like okay like the pokemon's slow enough right but like it was already gonna get outsped by everything else so just make it even slower and then you would just make one other stat really good and then it becomes exceedingly harder to take down or even potentially could wipe your group or your entire team something along those lines right well, the funny thing is that they allowed Xerneas on the field, that deer Pokemon from Gen Seer, uh, 6. I'm surprised they even allowed Xerneas on the field, considering it had Geomancy and then the White Herb right on it. White Herb basically speeds up the process of moves that take, like, one turn or two. Yeah. So, yeah, there's gonna be, like, a level 2, like, special attack Xerneas on the field already, so... That's like, oh, after okay. one turn, you pull off that Geomancy, boom! Turn one, it's already like level two special attack, and Xerneas is already powerful as enough. So at the end of the day, when it comes to like the, the professional scene has these like like slight issues, but they get addressed as tournaments go on. And within game releases, they also will buff and nerf the case of the professional scene, but it still like makes it seem like like as much as like they're, the Pokemon franchise at the current moment might like, be lacking in a sense like there is still an environment where there the, you know there is a buildup of a community for these people but you have to almost kind of like be searching for it or have at least you know the ability to access an online um like uh community with it in these games and that's like some struggles to serve people but others maybe not so much I think the competitive scene is stronger within the community itself because there are YouTubers that are involved in these really big draft tournaments. And I used to watch them back then to teach myself how to play competitive, and that's basically where I started. But watching them play compared to Worlds, I feel was more interesting because there were more interesting picks and interesting builds to see. And it would make me sit there and go, wow. This actually works. It's not like playing one league match and you end up with like iron four people and you say, oh, this build works. And then you go into like diamond one and people are literally destroying you. No, this build actually works throughout the entire game, no matter what you do. And it was it was a really interesting concept to see the community build up this competitive scene and have a stronger sense of the competitive scene compared to what I've seen through the company itself. Uh huh. Okay. So would you say that like Pokemon almost the backbone of it is these like are these content creators, these YouTube um, 
channels that really push Pokemon and kind of like allow it to thrive outside, like after like it gets released from like the hands of Nintendo, and. Well, yeah, you have people shiny hunting. You have people doing the tournaments, like hosting their own money tournaments, stuff like that. Okay. I, that's another issue I have. Shiny hunting isn't as efficient now. Because I remember when I was shiny hunting for a Galarian Ponyta in Shield, it was not fun. There was no other method to actually shiny hunt unless you're running around in circles for years and years. And you finally run into a Galarian Ponyta, and then you have to hit it and kill it, and then you gotta find another one, hit it and kill it, and create that chain. But it's like a 2% chance of encountering it. So it's not like Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire where you had the Dex Nav. Where you could specifically search for that Pokemon, the Pokemon shows up in the grass, and then you creep towards it, and they're able to do a shiny chain. No, you have to do standard running around and finding a Pokemon. And that specific Pokemon, a chain. So they address this at other points in the game series, basically. But not, and within the current gen of Pokemon that we're going to... Like, this current generation of Pokemon, the one that we're using now, they have it. Right? Is what we're going for. Is what yeah, we're and the feature, the feature that I hope that comes back is the Pokenav. I bo was it the Pokenav? I forgot what the yeah. item was called to Shiny Hunt. I don't know if you remember, you get it after you complete the Pokedex or something, and you could shiny hunt and start, like, a chain. And then once you get the 40, like, your, um, your chance is a little higher of finding a shiny. Uh -huh. But it's still a chance. So basically, you... Yeah, there's a chance. Like, 1 out of 8,000 something. Dying. But it raises your chance a little more if you hit that 40 chain. And it's essential to do that. Yeah. Why did it change oh. so much, though? That's why I don't understand. I, I don't- I don't know. I thought the Dex Nav was a great feature in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because it would tell you what Pokemon are in that route too. It was really cool. Like, if I wanted to shiny hunt for an Eevee, it would be right near Rustboro City. So I would go to Rustboro City, I'd go to the right, where the cave next to Vernon Turf Town is, and then I would shiny hunt for an Eevee. I would click on the Eevee icon on the screen, it would search for an Eevee in the grass, or in the area, to say, it would pop up in the little grass, you hear, like, the Eevee sound, it's shaking, and then you creep towards it. There was the ability to creep towards it with the the analog stick on the 3DS. You creep towards it, and then you start a chain. If you have the shiny charm, you complete the Pokedex, you have the shiny charm, you have a higher chance of finding a shiny Pokemon. I think it was, like, 1 out of 2,000-something compared to 8,000-something. And this is the easiest version of it, you uh, I, I believe well, Omega Ruby really Alpha Sapphire, as Sapphire is the easiest way to shiny hunt. Is it, now, I'm only saying this because I did watch like one YouTube video at one point, I believe. And I think this is, in, in regards to a game I actually have never played. This is the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon series, where they released, I believe, it was some kind of like end game content where you were able to go into like some kind of deep delve yes 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 okay yeah it. okay that that was really good for people who do want to shiny hunt for legendaries because you could find the specific holes you have to go through and then you find the legendary what you do is to soft reset save in front of where the legendary is going to encounter like really close to it not like you know far away to the point you waste time walking up you stay, like, one or two pixels before the encounter begins. You save. You encounter. Not shiny. Okay. You press... Oh. I... I don't remember. I think it was LR select start. You hold Maybe. down on, and then it soft resets. So that's what I... That's what I did for my shiny ho -Oh and heart gold to silver. That is a classic way of shiny hunting. So now, if you want to shiny hunt... You soft reset for a legendary, which if they're re if they're shiny locked, you can't shiny hunt. Yes, actually, shiny locking exists. They did that in Gen Six, believe it or not, and I believe they did that in um, Sun and Moon as well with Lunala and Solgaleo. Yeah, so that was a really stupid thing. They shiny lock them and then they eventually release them as a shiny for some mystery gift event. But even then, it's like woohoo! I got a shiny for free. Awesome. It doesn't feel rewarding. It really doesn't. Because I remember when I was shiny hunting on Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I still haven't gotten a shiny Suicune, but you know, I was shiny hunting 
or ho -Oh on Soul Silver because post game you're actually able to get ho -Oh in Soul Silver and Lugia in Heart Gold. So either way, you're still able to get both eventually. So shiny hunting for ho -Oh. I was soft resetting. You have a one out of eight thousand something chance. And I got it within over a hundred soft resets. And I remember that morning, I'm like, oh my god, I got it. It feels so rewarding in the end. Oh, you feel great. I go on streamer mode. I didn't even realize my Discord notifications can be heard. They're not showing, <laughs> but it can be heard. Well, but you just, you just feel so rewarded and happy when you encounter that. Especially since it's such a low, low chance of encountering it. So do you feel like now that's the case, right? That's like the, the like wow, I finally got my shiny, right? Like after all this like trouble and you know I've been going to set myself through, I finally can get it. As opposed to these older games where it's like I set up like whatever the case is, I do a setup and then I get this shiny, and it's like oh, it's not the shiny I even want at this point. Like you're looking for like a specific one, just because the game has that method of allowing you to do that. I mean, if I had to be honest, I'd be perfectly okay with encountering any random shiny in the old games, considering how low the chances. I remember in Pokemon Platinum, I put honey on the tree, and then I came back one day because I'm like, oh, I want a palm, and then it was a shiny combi, and I'm like, wait, what? Where did this come from? Like a shiny combi? That's so random. So I caught it. Of course, it's male. I can't evolve, but you know, it's still cool to have like it feels rewarding just to even randomly encounter one all right oh yeah i forgot the thing with combi you can only <laughs> you can only evolve it if it's female that's the same thing with um salandit from uh gen 6 or what was sun and moon gen 6 or gen 7 i don't remember that's seven Oh, it's seven. Oh, I'm losing track of time. Sun and Moon oh yeah, seven. Omega Ru Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire was um, Gen six. It was X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Okay, now I remember. So Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon was Gen seven. Yeah, I'm. I haven't kept track of Pokemon in such a long time. It's not even funny. That's how <laughs> sad it is. But <laughs> shiny hunting is just not as fun as it used to be because you had the Masuda method. So you either ride around- okay, Masuda Method is basically you take a Japanese Ditto and a Pokemon that you want to breed for and you put in the daycare and you get eggs and you run around with the bike until you get a shiny. Mm -hmm. So you can have over 32 boxes filled with the same Pokemon and you still don't have a shiny. What? Yeah, it's very tedious to just sit there and like- ride around on a bike for hours and hours on end and just you know like those eggs can take a while to hatch depending on what pokemon you're hunting for even if you have a pokemon with flame body flame body basically helps the process with hatching eggs but even then it it's still a tedious process it's still very annoying i personally don't prefer the masuda method i prefer shiny hunting on something like Omega Ruby off Sapphire, because there's over oh, 721... The there's over 721 Pokemon in that game. So, either way, I still can shiny hunt for a lot of Pokemon that I want. Interesting. Very interesting. See, these are things that you don't... Like, you, like, in my case, it's like, oh, you disappear from Pokemon for a couple of years, and now you find out. And this is, like, the little... like, But, like, you know, you, you, you know, the occasion, like, I caught my, like, eye on some YouTube videos. Just out of like boredom, just to appease, you know, the satisfaction of like, what, well, well, what is this? Now I hear it coming from you guys, and it's like, oh wow, like maybe I need to give Pokemon another shot. Maybe I need to like actually get a deep dive and maybe consider getting Sword and Shield because of it. They don't care about their spin-offs as much as the main games. They rush out the main games and then they abandon the spin-offs. I remember the last Pokemon Ranger game was absolutely fantastic, by the way. It's my favorite Ranger game out of yeah, the three Ranger. games. Guardian Signs was the best Ranger game, and I will argue to the ends of the earth about it. Because they had really cool events. They had an Arceus event, actually. So you would capture Giratina, Palkia, and Dialga, and then the final boss was Arceus. So, some mystery gifts 
in Ranger, from Ranger all the way to Guardian Signs, you were able to transfer those Pokemon into the current mainline games. Mm -hmm. So they were special events. So you'd get a Manaphy egg, you would hatch the Manaphy egg. They had the sprite of the Manaphy egg when you transfer it into game, and as the icon, as the egg, instead of the normal egg icon. Which was really cool. That, that was like a cool little coding thing they did. But you'd get like a Mew, you'd get a Manaphy, a Heatran, um... Was it Jirachi? No, it wasn't Jir Shaman! Shaman was one of the Pokemon you can get exclusively through Ranger. You would go through like these little events in Ranger. It was like the classic mystery gift of Gen 4. Where you, you know, go through like the little event and then you finally get the Pokemon. So Shaman, you had to like run around, find Shaman. Shaman is scared, hiding from like hunters or something. And then you finally like capture it or whatever. And then it said Shaman is now available to transfer into your games. Then you transfer it into a new game, like one of your games, the mainline games, with another DS. Mm -hmm. And then you have Shaman on your game. And it says where it came from like a faraway region. As like this little description on where the Shaman came from. Because every Pokemon has a description of where it came from, like Route 101, Route 211, stuff like that. It says, came from a faraway region, traveled far or whatever. And it would have like, the special nature it has, it has movesets, stuff like that. I thought that was cool. Now they don't really do that. Unless the Sword and Shield DLC was basically like a huge mystery gift. I don't know. I know they introduced a new legendary that looks like a bunny. What what, what, is, what is that thing? It's like a bunny? Who knows? I, I don't I don't know what I know, it, and then they, they had like this little panda looking thing. Oh, I, I don't I know. know. I was I know. just okay. I know what it is. The panda, the kung fu panda thing. The the kung fu, the kung fu panda. No, literally, yeah, that's the basically kung what it is. Panda. The kung fu panda and this bunny thing. The, it's like the crown. It's like it's like super psychic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a more advanced than Mewtwo, which I don't know how that happens, but okay. Wait, it's more. Wait, what? It's like really powerful, like. It literally mind controls someone in the in the game. I remember. Where did you see that? It's in the it's in the thing. Like it's yeah. in the trailer. Like, I've watched someone play it. That's a little weird. I okay. Sword and Shield has its strengths and weaknesses. I think it has a lot of weaknesses than strengths. If I recommended oh a god, Pokemon game to someone, oh god, what is happening? What, Luigi's Mansion? Yeah, whatever the hell. I don't think an animation was supposed to do that, but it did. <laughs> but, um... I think Sword and Shield has a lot of weaknesses. I One strong point was to see the Pokemon outside of the grass, just walking around like a natural habitat. I thought that was a really cool feature. Um, Dynamax, it's your, you know, new feature to the game. This Pokemon can now do this. Like, Mega Evolving, like, oh, this this now has a new form, but the lore is actually that you're putting your Pokemon in pain by Mega Evolving it. Yes, that is part of the lore, which is really creepy and dark. You should read the Pokedex sometimes, because the entries are very questionable. Like, Drifloon, it steals children. What? Uh, uh, okay, what? so in Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, there's Team Galactic, which is the team of the game, and there's this little event in the game where you go to the Valley Windworks and you have to save the scientists. Uh, who, um, is it the trip? You remember that with um, Mars? You had to fight Mars and her perugly. So yeah. the dialogue was it the father or the grandfather? I believe it was the father we had to save or the grandpa some some relative of the child that yeah. told us that their relative is stuck in there with team galactic like being, being held for being, ransom being canceled, yeah so you would save the grandpa or the dad and the kid says i can't wait for the balloon pokemon to come back so i think it was every friday you'd be able to encounter Drifloon next to Valley Windworks. So, yeah, okay, Drifloon looks cute, right? You catch it, alright, the Pokedex entry comes in. It kidnaps children. No. It kidnaps children! Why? So, like, you're thinking about it, like, that kid 
is talking about a Pokemon that kidnaps children. So like, it's so dark. Here's the thing. Being that this darkness can lie in a game like Pokemon, do you think that should be a lot? Like, is that more for, like, a mature already? Like, the mature already audience? See, as a kid, I, I don't... Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think anyone ever paid attention to the Pokedex entries when they caught a Pokemon. <laughs> they would be... They would be I, I would be mashing B and A, honestly, if I caught a new Pokemon, <laughs> just to be able to nickname it something stupid Wait, gonna, that I was obsessed okay. with. Are we gonna bring up the entire... What, what, what's the creepypasta thing? The Palatown thing? We're gonna bring that up? That whole those thing? Are, those are some very what, Lavender game. Town Syndrome? What, whatever it was... No, the, it's like the, it's like the creepypasta. It's like, I bought a cartridge from, like, Again, and, it's, and it goes like boom, no boom, no boom, that was it, pokemon like creepy black or something we're talking about lavender town syndrome like how um they had pokemon that actually died see, like, yeah, they had a and graveyard, the tower was right? a cemetery yeah there's actually a graveyard in almost yeah. every game yes so there's a graveyard near salacion town no not salacion yes salacion town in gen 4 you had to use um defog to like completely see mm -hmm. the place, but you could wander around it and see it. Um, Gen 3 had Mount Pyre, and it also had an outskirts where you'd go up the stairs mm -hmm. on the the west side. And it was like this whole thing with like full picks. That's where the event where um they steal the orbs of Kyogre and Groudon, okay. the Team Aqua and Team Magma, yeah, on the peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um isn't this like a thing in Pokemon Go, like Eevee and Pikachu, though, too? There's like an entire sequence where you- That's Lavender Pokemon Town, Pokemon. yes, with Marowak and Cubone. Yes. But like- That was like the OG. Oh yeah, because like, that's the thing with the Cubones, they have like the skull of their dead mother or something. Like, yeah, because like Team that. Rocket killed it. But like, why are they like- see, that's what I don't get with Pokemon, like- In a game that's like, they, like- They flat out said that Marowak was my, killed. But Hold my thing is that- it's a game marketed towards kids, and you're gonna put in all of this like stuff for like someone who's clearly more mature. And I if mean, a kid pays attention and slows down. Like, what do you do then? I mean, <laughs> have you seen Psychonauts? I don't remember Psychonauts. Um, well, are, now we... they're making the second one. We're gonna have a second Psychonauts. Are we gonna talk so... about how then the Psychonauts is literally an entire thing where like, oh yeah, one of the people in your group or whatever, yeah, they she had like an orphanage and an entire thing burned down. And she, what? Hears, and she hears the She's screams of the children every night or whatever. Oh my! It's horrible. It's a, there are games that definitely have more. I feel like Psychonauts is a game that definitely is not kid friendly though. I, what is that like a T? I think the game's literally a T. I don't. Teen. I think it's rated. Maybe it's E10 plus. Hold on. I'm no, gonna, I'm gonna quickly look no that way. up. I'm gonna tell you right now because it's definitely not for M. It is definitely a T for Teen game because the very end of the game. It, oh, it is, it is game, teen. I thought it was E. Or and like the E10. reason why, the reason why is because it's like, I'm pretty sure the very final sequel, like, yeah, there's like the concepts that they explored in the game and like the, the lore backgrounds that you find as you discover things in the environment, because it's a platformer game, so you're going to find the secrets. But like the, the ending sequence in the final stage is very grotesque and disturbing. That's why. What? How bad is it? Oh! Oh! oh whoa! I j okay, I just remembered something. In Pokemon Black and White 2, there was this house. There was this creepy house. I don't know if you played Black and White 2. Mm -hmm. I oh, never went- no. I never went into this house, but it was Darkrai, and um... Oh, wait. I, okay, I'll let you finish your thing. But, uh, oh, man. Cresselia. Cresselia, yes. That's the Pokemon. Darkrai and Cresselia. Cresselia, the moon Pokemon, and the nightmare pokemon so it was like this really spooky creepy house i remember seeing a little footage of it i never actually went into it but just looking at it was very eerie and there was also oh did you play x and y uh yeah this is what i was gonna bring up i was gonna bring about the uh the depart the apart like the, the department building or whatever it was and you go yes it was yes you, you go all the way to the top and it's dead silent and then you have this ghost girl with her legs as if she's walking but she her legs are just stuck open as if she's walking she's going towards you and then she goes around you and she just leaves can i just it's say the hex girl can i say that wait oh I... yeah the hex the hex maniac isn't that the thing yeah She's so a character was, in X and Y. That, I was playing that in high school. And, like, in high school, I was, like, not, like, I wasn't that, like, afraid of a lot of things growing into, like, into that age. Witnessing that when I was, like, in my, like, I was, like, playing 
um like it was like a school night whatever the case was but i was like in my bed and it was like oh late at night and i was like oh i'll stay up be the rebellious kid seeing like witnessing that scene was something that i didn't expect out of that game it's so all. unnerving right it's it's not just unnerving but it's just outright like like a right hook that the game gives you especially as a kid i encountered that like that's like something that like you really were never supposed to find i feel like if you're a there kid. was no warning there Either. is no warning. It just happens, Paul. Like, it just you happens. just get to that floor in Lumio City. Because Lumio City train. has that train station, right? You just take one wrong turn, it's all over. Like, as a kid, hey, nightmares. That's literally it. And believe it or not, I think there's lore connected to that in the Lumio City train station. Because behind a sign, it says something like, waiting for you or whatever. So and there's, like, this theory lore. that this girl actually died waiting for someone. So they really... They made this like some uh, definitely like a, a, a actual piece of like the like the area and the environment. That you oh were. oh oh! There's there's another creepy place. You remember, um, the old chateau in Eterna, the Eterna Forest. Is this the the one with all the fog? Or uh... no no, it's the mansion in the forest near Eterna City. Is it? I, see, this is what it's reminding me of. Like um oh my god what. Like in Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire, I'm thinking about where it's like the, you're going through the second gym, and or maybe this it might be um, like Diamond or something I forget. And there's that mansion, and that you're like walking through, and you normally double battle your way through it, and you can't even get to the mansion without having cut. And yes, yes, yes. That's that's the that's the old chateau. You have to be Gardenia, and then you see Gardenia, and she's like really creeped out by it. But there's this theory that Gardenia used to live in that mansion, and the old man and the little girl were actually family members of her that were poisoned and died. So they really Oh my god, this puzzle, please! So Pokemon really pushes the boundaries of a kid's game, I feel like. And it's- It was creepy as a kid to see, like, the moving eyes in the room, and then you see the ghost next to the room where Rotom is supposed to be, because Rotom is mm -hmm. yeah. in that TV, like, you have to get there at a- certain time i think it was like four to eight o'clock in the morning it's, it's and you have to get there. there yeah and i believe you were able to catch it yeah, you were. in diamond and pearl before unless it was platinum before the national decks but then you had to get the national decks in one of the games in order to catch rotom so it would just come up as like silly text this tv is on whatever yeah. stuff like that but the theory does connect when you find the antidote in the kitchen you find it in a trash can. Paul, I don't know if you know what an antidote is. It heals poisoning from Pokemon. No, I know that. But it, the, the theory connects. There's so many Pokemon theories out there, and it's just so dark. See, And how they do connect in the world. You just have to dig. Did you, did you, say, so, a, did you say a game theory? Oh my... <laughs> Please. So, right, listen, listen. If you think I'm so not going to make jokes on this podcast, it's so crazy. Even, so even though we really dig in, like, we before we, like, were kind of, like, given bad rep on, like, the Pokemon series, when they hit, when they do it, when they make it, like, impactful, they really make it good. They do a good job on making it impactful, yes. It's like when they ch actually try, it's good stuff. Well, you know how it is nowadays when it comes to trying in video games. I mean, or like in like you know, developing a video game company. I mean, I was gonna, and the closest thing I'm gonna say to this is Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, that's another uh, episode we're uh, gonna oh talk about is later. an entire topic <laughs> that we will not be discussing today. But I we discussed that today. I, we're gonna be here until 1 a.m. If we would discuss that, because I played through that game, and I would love to share my experience of the game. Granted, it's 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 gonna be like a spoiler marathon. So hopefully well, that's the, the only time... thing we're gonna be spoiling. Well, spoiling yeah, probably not. I mean, our next two episodes <laughs> are spoiling the entirety of Last of Us One and Two. So, and these are games I well, I mean, granted, I know what happens in both. Never played through them though, but I watched online, and I can't wait to talk about that stuff. Uh, They're gonna be very fun. interesting concepts. <laughs> when Game Freak tries, they succeed, and that's what I'm going to say about the new Mystery Dungeon remake of the first two games. You guys know how much I grind the hell out of that game, because it's just so enjoyable. Mystery Dungeon was such a refreshing spin-off, and so dear to me as a series, and to see such a strong remake come out like that, it gives me that big expectation like, wow, 
Game Freak did such an amazing job on the spin-off. I hope to see more in the future like that. But then you see games like Sword and Shield for the Mainlight series, and you're like... Oh, no. Okay... It's buggy, it's not fun, it's generic. Animation but then you have goofy as <laughs> my god. But uh... then you have Mystery Dungeon, you have this all new beautiful looking art style. It's not that buggy. Sometimes the FPS drops a little, mm -hmm. but other than that, it's not a buggy game. It's fun, it's enjoyable, there's endless hours of entertainment, there's tons and tons of post-game. And I mean, there's so much post-game that I'm still not even done with it yet. And the post-game can be very, very difficult. And that's what makes Mystery Dungeon fun. Sometimes it can get frustrating, but the post-game feels very rewarding when you finish that 99-floor dungeon that was extremely difficult. And they have really cool features, like you can find shiny Pokemon now for strong Pokemon that are appearing in the dungeon. So they have, like, these specific Pokemon appearing as the one strong Pokemon on certain floors. And there's a chance of it being a shiny, but you know, it's harder to recruit it. You could do yeah. everything in your power to try and recruit this thing, and it still won't join your team. But you know, it's still cool to see the shiny. So you're like, wow, okay, I encountered a shiny Pokemon. So, but, yeah, no, sorry, my bad. So no, not it's okay. Pokemon doesn't include enough post game in their main games anymore. Here, you know, I was going to say, here's a good question. Oh, yeah. This is going to even bring into something else I was going to say. Because I'm pretty sure, um, what was it? This even remind like, because I'm going to, like, relapse on, like, an older game. Um, like, Pokemon games, like, maybe back then didn't really have that replayability or, like, that opportunity to, like, give more of, like, a post-game. Um, I was going to say Pokemon Snap. And I'm only saying this because they're having a remake now, I believe, right? Or they're making a Yeah, there's a remake. Snap. And they're completely is... remaking it. Oh, wait, there's... wait, this is a complete remake now? This they one? out they outsource to Bondi Namco. And in It that looks regard... beautiful. I... But it's gonna be the same game like the, the other remakes are kinda like doing? I never- added? I never played Pokemon Snap, but I believe it's going to be very close to the original Pokemon Snap. Alright. Well... It looks like they're adding new Pokemon. Alright. Like, you know, the current Pokemon. Yeah, but they're still see... the OGs. Mm-hmm. All right, we gotta look to see. Honestly, that would be something to be fun to play, and that's gonna be on the Switch, right? Yeah, it's coming out April. My sister has it, so I can stream it. She's gonna get it. That would be a fun game to showcase, maybe on this podcast if we're around for that. It looks really nice. I think it's very fun. It's it's as sim for a it's just a chill game. It's a very simple game, and for a simple game, I think the the idea of what you can do in it, and like impl like you know how you can maybe. Like, in relax, enjoy it for a couple hours, come, you know, come back here and there from, like, work or whatever the case might be. Like, something like that is enjoyable. Or someone, you know, a kid comes back home from school to get on Pokemon Snap, the remake, and they just See, play it for a couple hours. That's the funny thing. I didn't grow up with Snap. I grew up with Pokemon Channel. Oh, Pokemon he... Channel was my home. Did they ever remake that game? I oh. wish. It came out in, like, 2004. That had a cool feature, too, where it came with, like, these e-reader cards, and you'd connect your Game Boy Advance to it. Mm -hmm. That that had a lot of great stuff, and I actually opened it recently to check to see if my memory card still worked, because my sister wanted to play Wind Waker. And just going back to it, it still had my name on it. It still had the current date, our current time. And I opened it, and I'm like, wow, these graphics are still amazing for 2004 on the GameCube. So, the graphics that were on there, I would say they're just as good as the, gra the graphics today. It just I has that special charm to it, and I hope Pokemon Channel does get a remake, because that was a very fun, relaxing... I have a best friend typed game, and we'd go all around the world, meet Pokemon. It was cute. It was relaxing. It was fun. I want more games like that. I feel like that's the kind of games you definitely want to see. That kind of bring back the old fan base, though, of, of like a uh, Nintendo. But uh, and you know what? We have Animal like, Crossing. Yeah, uh, I mean, Animal the excuse Crossing. would be Animal Crossing. But even though I think if they put like even if they did a remake, like here's the thing: all they gotta do, right? 
Oh, listen, Nintendo, I know you're listening to this. All I gotta do, all, all I gotta do <laughs> is just do, like, even if it's gonna be, like, a Skyward Sword, like, idea, if they just update the graphics and that's all they're really doing. Like, even something like that, but, like, bringing it into a newer audience that hasn't had this experience, and they never will get the, ex the ability to really experience a Pokemon channel. I don't even know if you can even get a copy, exactly. honestly. Probably that's not. my point, though. So something like that is why I feel like reintroducing something like this is would be good for the franchise and the company itself. I feel like that'd be like great. Be like, oh yeah, like instead of okay having like a mediocre like that should be like in the middle, you know, of like to like break up like um one of their release conferences, right? Where they stick that in the middle. That would be a real like twist to see something like that introduced. Well, no one expected Pokemon Snap, well, so like that hit it out of the ballpark. That's true. Everyone but, celebrated that day. They wanted now, a remake of Pokemon Snap. But now they gotta think. Now they gotta do that with this, right? That's what they should do, at least. In my opinion. Well, here's another underrated spin-off in the Pokemon series that I love to death: Pokemon Conquest. Is it has characters one? from Paul's favorite series. Is this the oh, one? Oh yeah, from the Samurai Wii? Warriors one. Yes. Very oh. fun game. I love this game to death. I have hours and hours on that game from when it released. It had Nobunaga as the villain with Zekrom. It was really cool. I thought it was we basically Fire Emblem, mm -hmm. but with like samurai warriors and Pokemon. See, I honestly thought this was going to be that one Wii game that was like, it was like a weird spinoff they made where it was Poke more like... Park? Is that the one where you end up battling and like... But like it was like little like fake amiibo, like they were like little tiny like chibi amiibo things. No, I remember. Oh yes, I love Pokemon Rumble. Yes, so, so Pokemon, Pokemon Rumble, Rumble was such a hit. Did, but the never... 3DS version was so underwhelming. Oh, they did do another one. They made another in the series for that. Yeah, that that wasn't really fun. But it wasn't. So they probably no. they probably would discontinue at that point if no one really. Yeah, it. it's dead. Yeah, it's dead. Uh, it's amazing how it's a hit or miss. They I remember they came out with like a mobile version of it, but I don't remember. Any updates there, about there it? Is, it kind of like died. There is also a mobile market with these games that Nintendo has too. That isn't Pokemon Go. I think they have one where it's basically oh, oh. like Pokemon Masters. Like yes, Gondia. Pokemon Masters. I played Pokemon that. Or Pokemon. It was okay. I'm sorry. What was that, Paul? No, were you saying Pokemon related? Like mobile Pokemon games? related? Yeah, where it's. Oh, I thought you were saying yeah, it's like. A, no, because it, I mean technically it's Pokemon related. Yeah, it's a phone game, right? That isn't. Pokemon Go, and instead it's the one where it's kind of like you build. It's like a team battle or a game where you build a team. Yeah, that's Pokemon Masters. Now, like, is that like considered a popular game? On it, like... it was a hit. Yeah, I would say it was a hit because it had full voice acting too. Okay. They had so... a lot of you know well-known voice actors like Erica Lenbeck, hey, um, Erica Harlicher. What? I just remember it. What's going on with that Pokemon? What's it called? That Pokemon MOBA thing. What's going on with that? Oh, oh my Pokemon God. Unite? <laughs> there was just... no. Surprisingly, I don't think there was any news about it in the last direct. The you know, last they... Pokemon. Direct. I'll be honest. In such a. Like, in, I'm only going to say this because in the world, if you want to play a MOBA. You're more than likely going to. I mean, I think. Don't play I'm, League of Legends. Don't you're gonna go to League, no, or no, no, you're gonna no, no, go to no, Dota. Go to Dota. Go, no, Do no, not no, go no. to League. Can isn't, you stop? Here's my question: no. Isn't Smite available on Steam? Oh wait, well, yeah. Steam, just, um, Smite is a mobile game too, right? No, no, no. no. Smite, I think, no? is available on the the Switch, isn't it? It is. I think it's available on the Switch. I think Smite is a game you might be able to play on the Switch. Or the, it was in concept, if anything. This well, is Pokemon Unite's going to be on the Switch, too. I think they're going to bring Wild Rift to Switch as well. Oh, you're right. That would be oh, very I'm fun. fun. See, I'm interested. To, no, no, no. I'm interested to see that because the meta is completely different on that game. And there's really good balancing. Hold on. I'm curious. What was the uh, thing I just said again? It was Smite. Pokemon right? Unite and Smite. So, Smite on... Switch. I just want to see if this is the game. I have major it... problems with Pokemon Unite. Uh, I mean, considering how good Riot is with mm -hmm. the splash arts for the loading screens, you know, how they have like the borders and stuff like that and really good splash art. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I saw the quote unquote splash arts for Pokemon mm -hmm. Unite. It's just the model of the Pokemon posed a certain way. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. with the costume. That, wait, what? That, that, There's no artwork or anything the way we have it in League. It's just what? the model. Also, no, yeah. I'm not joking with you. It was so stupid because there's um, there's this character named Sir Aaron in one of the Pokemon movies that owned a Lucario as like a best friend. And one of the costumes is supposed to be Sir Aaron's costume for Lucario. And I saw the sp splash art and I'm sitting there going, what? Why is it just a 3D model? It's just, it's just a 3D model posed with sir aaron's costume and like what happened why is there no artwork or anything did they not hire anyone to do special artwork for the loading screens maybe they never considered it i don't know but it's by tencent who I... also partially owns league so you would think they'd actually put effort into it yeah it's a little, yeah, but a little strange it's just like weird administrative choices that end up being what like, some managers would probably not see as important enough. But that's why I would go to League over Unite. Because the mechanics are super weird in Unite. You have to level up or, your Pokemon. Meaning, like, you actually level it up like a regular on Pokemon. Switch. It's on super Switch. strange. Or on the Switch now, you just play Smite. Because it's a thing. I, I Is it really? I, yes. This is a thing on the, on the store. On the, wait, we're forgetting. And I'll, I'll, you know what? Just, just to make sure, <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just to show you, I'll, I'll just, I'm going to send this to you guys in this little chat box that we have right there. Oh, Smite for the well Nintendo done. Switch. It is on Nintendo's official site. It literally, it specifies for everything. Season it's eight? What? There are it's seasons in this download. game. This game is competitively updated, and it's just another MOBA that if they were to compete, with like okay, you get like this Pokemon like specifically sided. Like Wasn't Pokemon. Avatar in this? Yes. Yeah. Ava Avatar. Avatar Nicolo is a, but that's Didn't a they have story. Zuko and uh Aang? Okay, they it was had it was Aang, Zuko and what's her name? Korra? I think Korra, Korra. Yeah. They had reskins of gods in this game as these characters. Cause they cause for some reason, of all companies, Nickelodeon got a uh, what's it called with them? Because I think Smite is the closest, like, maybe, to like, League. it's like, it's the closest thing to League without trying to push it as hard as League could, especially maybe because it's League being mainly, like, I'm pretty sure, because it's Tencent, the Chinese corporations, kind of twisting it in a sense that you wouldn't be allowed to get in on it like that. So Smite got in on it with, you know the avatar series and then they even did it with the uh the teenage uh, the teenage yeah, yeah, mutant yeah. ninja turtles yeah because they're so, owned by uh nickelodeon right yeah yeah oh I think, really yeah i think that they're um or at least they're marketed in like <laughs> oh! the entire like franchise oh, brand under you. them because <laughs> they own, i mean come on it's, it's a teenage mutant ninja turtles like they're kid shows like there are things like that yeah it's for kids who doesn't want to be you know a mutant in a half shell right yeah, who doesn't want to just uh, be, be a mutant freak, you know? I mean, let's be for real. You can't I, honestly, I, if I could be a Ninja Turtle, I would. All right, that's pretty cool. What? Man. That's pretty cool, man. It's a Ninja Turtle. What, are you, what else are you gonna say? I can't but, say. But, but your entire diet is made of pizza. Only pizza. What do you think I'm eating right now? Oh yeah, that's right. You are eating a pizza. I was, yeah, I'm Wait to, a minute. There's a. There's a theory that Lily from Gen 7 is connected to the ghost girl from X and Y. I guess you find out these things. You sort of knew what? Day, right? Wait. Huh? Well, it's, it's a theory, right? So Okay. It yeah, it, exactly. So it might not be the case. This might not be, you know, something that you... You, you know, if you look it up on YouTube, I imagine that there's going to be someone explaining it to you. So it wouldn't be so far-fetched. Remember when they had like the buried alive hack that people were doing? I you go to, like, oh my god, and the pause. hand and the, stuff like the, that. The what? No. Translate to the non-Pokemon fan. What do you? What do you mean? The, the, non the I mean, is okay. This, like, where you'd use an actual replay and things like this existed, or? Let me send the link. You guys can see this for yourselves. There was like this mod or something. Hold on. Am I for is this? It, is this good enough to go and put on stream if it's called buried alive? Um, I mean, it was something that seemed very convincing. Hold on, let me, let me, like, let me it what, was. What is this? 
Um, something very interesting. What is that? That that image? Okay, so the ghost the ghost is normal. Encountering that ghost is normal. That's actually the Marowak. The, 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 why is wait? But what's the point of this? Though? I don't get this. Is that is this when you faint? This is what happens. I honestly. Oh my Google Chrome! I haven't open. seen this like, mod in such a long time. I just dying. I just remembered this out of nowhere because I was looking at the lore for the X and Y girl. And then I just saw this on the recommended. Oh yeah, there you go. I mentioned that the mother's soul was calm. Okay, so this is like a nine minute video if you want to show that, but I mean I'm honestly, not gonna, it's it's I'm not no, gonna show I mean, the whole thing, but I'm just gonna be like I'm No, more... but this is something very weird. I just wanna know like what's happening at the end. When it's like what is going on there? Like that's what I'm more like confused. Oh, that's my, this is something, that's my ears it looks gone. kinda disturbing. Wait, first. Yeah, the disturbing. The sound font is very pitchy. Yeah, let me and lower that before that's, I show this. I don't even know if you're, like, able to show that. I mean, like, this is, like... I mean, you could probably show it on stream. No, like, it's that's not... very weird. It's a very strange thing. Is that where this ghost thing... Wait, that's where this ghost thing is from? 